Hello, everybody, and we are back after our long break. Uh, we ate some dinner, we had some fresh air, and now we are back, of course, with the last session that we are doing today. We will be here for another three hours to cover, of course, the rest of the online 2020 Olympiad. I'm still Roland, and with me, of course, is still Anna Mazichuk. How are you doing, Anna? Uh, great. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, good morning to our American viewers. I'm a Grandmaster Anna Mazutuk here today with Grandmaster Roland Prusers. We are commentating on Division 2 of PIDE Online Chess Olympiad, and we are starting with the last round in, in Pool D. Do you have viewers who are rooting for Turkey, Serbia, Norway, or Croatia? I believe we do. These teams have the best chances to qualify to the top division. Turkey, Norway will be the clutch match in the last round. Uh, Turkey is actually the only team at the moment who has already qualified to the top division, no matter what will be the result of this round. Yes, right. exactly. Exactly. You are absolutely correct there. And we'll, of course, show you the exact round in just a bit. Before we do that, we actually also want to remind you real quickly of what the online tournament, uh, of what the online Olympiad actually is. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a really big event with uh, 163 teams and over 1,500 players from really all around the world participating. There are countries uh, participating that I haven't even heard of and that I actually had to look up. That's why the joke Geography Master instead of Grandmaster was added to my name. But yeah, here you go. The teams are split into five divisions. We are currently in Division 2 according to strength and are further divided into pools within those divisions based on time zone and strength. You wouldn't want a team to play in the afternoon and another team at night, so that's why we are doing that. Each team features two open boards, two women's boards, one junior male board, and one junior female board, a format that I personally really like and that I've heard a lot of good comments about from other players as well. Teams within each pool play a single round robin with players playing against their corresponding boards. So the youth board against another youth board, the uh, open board against the other open board, and so on. The top three teams from each pool advance to the next division and after that, after the top division, we will reach that a knockout style playoff ultimately decides the 2020 FIDE Online Olympiad champion. But we are still a long way from that. We are still, of course, going to focus on Division 2 and this time Pool D. Let's take a look at what this round has in store for us. So as you can see, uh, Nor oh, actually, we also have to, of course, update you on what happened in the last round when we, while we were going on a break. Norway lost to Croatia, and that is actually pretty clutch for Croatia because Croatia still has a chance to qualify with that. Iceland drew against Ireland 3-3. Chile lost against Guatemala 3.5, 2.5. Sweden won against Denmark 4.5, 1.5, and Serbia lost to Turkey. And yeah, that is... Pretty awesome. All right, we also, of course, want to show you the standings, what is currently going on before we move on to the last round in this pool. Turkey, like you said, Anna, already qualified in this pool, and Norway, Serbia, and Croatia fighting for the last two spots in this pool. All right, now the moment that everybody has been waiting for. What matches will occur in round nine? Turkey, Norway, the big clash between the number one and number two. And Serbia, Denmark. If Serbia wins, they are totally through to the next division. Croatia, depending on other results, but if they win against Ireland, as you can see in the bottom of the, of the round nine uh, yeah, card, they are still able to get through to the next division. So yeah, a very exciting round nine. Right, Anna? Yeah, sure. Looking at the pairings and looking at the standings, I think that Serbia has very good chances to qualify too because they play with Denmark, the team that is currently on the bottom of the cross table. So uh, almost everything will be decided in the matches Turkey, Norway and Croatia, 
versus Iceland. But once again, it's chess, it's fight, anything can happen. Even the teams that look uh, like lower rated or didn't perform well in the beginning may beat the team that uh, did better in the previous rounds. So let's just dive into the games and uh, let's watch the last round encounters in case uh, the games, of course, have started. In case not, we will provide you with more information about the Olympiad. And your wish is my command. Let's dive right into the game. So Turkey, Norway, the big match. Let's start with that one. Round uh, board one, Simon Akdestein, Magnus Carlsen, unfortunately not available for Norway at this time, but they are doing extremely well. And yeah, still have a good chance to qualify. Uh, he's playing against Vahab Sanal from Turkey, board one. And I think we've got some sort of French opening on the board, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. I didn't even have to check that. There you go. D4, D5, knight D2, Tarash position. And this is the A5 move. I haven't seen that move before. Well, I have, but not in this position. Uh, I think you should have seen this move because it's a popular move, I think, in this position. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. the idea is to grab more space on the queen side. Also, the idea is to play b6, bishop a6 later on. As mm. Because as we know, the light squared bishop uh, in French is like a headache for black. So they are trying to trade this bishop as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. So what happened in the game after that? a4, I see what's played. Uh yeah, that's true. Uh, before that, let me clarify what uh, what has, has always been played against me, just to clarify. Always, this is the main line where black goes with f6, knight takes knight of three. I've gotten this a thousand times on the board already. And a5 is, I haven't gotten that on the board so often, or actually never, so I was a bit surprised to see that in this game. But it's a very solid plan, like Anna explained, and... Let's see what happened. Yes, a4 was the move played as a reply. C takes, C takes, knight b4, uh, bishop b5. So both players have good squares over here. b6, short castle, bishop a6, takes, takes, knight c3, and bishop b4. So black got rid of the, the big uh, headache in the position, uh, the light squared bishop. So is black already better in this position? Why? Because they got rid of the life squared bishop. I am not sure. In fact, I think that white is still better because of the space advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's speak about the plans uh, for both sides. What is uh, threatening? Is actually bishop takes c3 a threat? I am not so sure because after b, b takes c3, uh, the pawn on b6 will be kind of a weak pawn. Uh, later on, white may think about the ideas to push c4 or to bring the bishop to d6 via a3. Another plan is just to play. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. You shouldn't not, You shouldn't <laughs> get rid of this arrow because I think I another plan. This, was, this was your idea, right? It's yeah, it's one of the ideas. But another idea is to play knight b5 <laughs> and f4, f5. So... Um... Yeah, knight b5 and then f4, f5, yep. Uh, while uh, in case white plays f4, of course, black can meet it with the move f5. I'm sorry, yeah, f4, f5, yeah. Yeah, and so it's a very strategical position, I suppose, yeah, with... Uh, I like actually what's what white played in the game. Uh, this is a move that you see very often, which is the move queen g4, trying to attack the pawn on g7. And something like knight f3, bishop h6 could maybe be very annoying for black at some point. So, yeah, knight f3, f5, a move you mentioned. Yeah, sometimes a very good uh, blockading move because it stops after e takes, queen takes, it stops the bishop h6 maneuver here. There is a big drawback here, and that's that the pawn on e6 is very weak. So... Yeah, it's a. Uh, I think I like white more and more, also because after knight b5, the knight on a6 is a bit stuck. So, yeah, I don't know. Oh wait, okay, yeah. 
That's a trick I did not see. <laughs> <laughs> takes, takes, and white is simply a pawn up. This is the current position, and all right, not much to add. I think black, white is simply a pawn up, so Turkey doing very well here. Yeah? Yeah, good news for Turkey pawn up on the top board. How about the other boards? How are they doing? All right, Teammates. board two. So JJ, uh, yeah, I've streamed with him uh, from the black side. He's a streamer sometimes on Twitch. Uh, I think his username is the last seven samurai. If you want to follow him on Twitch, then remember that uh, seven you write with the number, not with uh, the word, not with the letters. So, <clears throat> yeah, uh, how is he doing? Bishop b5, uh, isolated pawn. Uh, he's playing against Freude Urkedal. And I don't know, I like White a lot here, actually, especially after Rook f8, because White has, is very, very active here. Yeah, it looks unusual that uh, Black played Rook f8. On the other hand, let's take a look on the other moves. Rook e7 was not possible. Uh, could we just, yeah? Yeah, uh, rook e7, the problem is that white can simply take on f6 and spoil black structure, so that's definitely what black wants. In case black played rook e6 instead of rook f8 or rook e7, then knight g5 may come, and it's not so clear where to move the rook. If rook d6, then bishop e5, and the rook is trapped. Yep, so, absolutely. So rook f8 was necessary. Yeah? Uh, rook f8 was necessary, perhaps. And black is preparing something like queen e7 and then rook fd8, but this needs some time sometimes. Yeah, um, indeed. And I like how white played here because I think white is more or less playing against the queen e7 idea because white then has knight f5 ideas trying to undermine the queen and maybe try something on the king side with queen f3 and trying to attack the g7 pawn. I don't know. I think something went quite wrong for Black somewhere. Uh, but yeah, we'll see if he can manage to uh, get back. And by the way, uh, JJ, as I call him, Samil Khan Ali Marandi, actually has doesn't have a 2757 rating, everybody. He has a rating around mine, like 2560. So yeah, just keep in mind that these are the chest.com ratings and not the official feeder rating. So. Before you are going to uh, shout, wow, what a good player he should. He's one of the world best in players in the world. Uh, yeah, that's his chess.com player. He's very good at chess.com uh, tournaments, by the way. All right, so g6 on the board, stopping knight of five. So that means queen e7 might be on the board, but weakening this diagonal that is maybe going to work in the long run. Yeah, some, some ideas like queen f3 are coming to my mind, uh, trying to to yeah, put more pressure on the knight, on the f6 knight. And I even thought about some sacrifices like queen f3, let's say queen e7, and maybe something like knight f5. Maybe that works, maybe not. <laughs> Actually, that might work indeed. Uh, okay, black does have some connect, some ideas. So the idea is that you attack the knight with also the h7 pawn, but I think black still has... I guess d4 has to be played, yeah? Still not know. clear. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> maybe b4, maybe e takes d4, yes. What about this? Knight e4, yeah. Knight e4, queen g4, queen g5. And this take, queen takes, queen g5, queen g6. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't work, unfortunately. But it's in, it's on um, these ideas are definitely always in the position. Sometimes a uh, move like this is also possible, or maybe first queen f four, queen h six, for example. So, yeah, while black white does not have any weaknesses, while black has a bunch, so this should be very good for white. Uh, let's move on to the next game, shall we? Let's see. Or Mm. Sheila versus Ekaterina Talik. I think Ekaterina scoring uh, as one of the best players in this whole pool, I think. So, yeah. Queen yes, I believe we saw her with almost a 100% score or maybe even with a 100% score. She's really doing very well in this tournament. And she's actually pressing in this game too. 
she yeah she has a bishop versus a knight and uh, the knight on d4 it's not an outpost d4 is not an oh. outpost because we may play e3 later on let's say we just take on f6 and play e3 on the next move and i believe white is better because a white skin is safer a white bishop will be more dangerous than the knight it's my estimation <clears throat> I, I agree there. Um, black is very solid still, but I think plan could be something like h4, h5 to try and get some pressure going, maybe even connected with king g2 and rook h1. So that could be a potential plan, but yeah, black is extremely solid. There's no breakthrough yet, but uh, yeah, I agree. I do think that white is a lot better. I like the pawn structure also. My white can take uh, some action with the rook on uh, maybe with ideas like f4, e4, and e5 at some point. And also the rook on c7 looks a bit awkward like this. It wants to be probably on f8, but uh, that takes a while for the rook to get there. So, yeah, I agree. I think this looks very good. I like the move f5, uh, just in general, not the first, not necessarily in this position, but yep, e takes, rook takes, and then e3 is actually on the board. So, yeah, let's see how the next game is going. So we are more or less focusing on this match, everybody, because it's the number one versus number two in the standings. So that is Norway versus Turkey. Uh, Norway might need actually to win this game in order to, to qualify for the next round. So that is why we are going to watch this one, at least for now. So position four, game four, we've got... Uh, Betul Kamriyudis against Olga Dolchikova. Who's better and why? Hmm. Look kind of equal. More or less, yeah. Knight this one was a cool move. Developing the piece and White can't take it uh, because the pawn on C3 is hanging. Yep, so please. please pay attention to that. That's a very nice tactic. Yeah, uh, because if you take like this, then white has got the chance to take like this, I guess, and then start maybe a minority attack. Yeah, that's why black does not want to take on d4. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was the co waiting for the confirmation. Well, yeah, it was, uh, it was a question. Like, yeah, <laughs> I didn't like taking on d4. Yes, because. Uh, this will just strengthen a white center, so we don't need to take it better. We play knight d7 or try to keep the queen on e5. Yeah, yeah. this time is just exactly. a problem. I agree. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, that is this game. Let's move on to board five. I'm trying to find the more exciting games where there are, is already something going on. Well, uh, I asked for it, and here you go. Um, board five. I believe so. This is the this is the youth board. Oh, actually, uh, wait. Before we move on, we've actually got a result already. We've got oh. this game. Simon Akterstein, the legend himself for Norway, unfortunately lost against Fahab. So now we already saw the opening where White won a pawn, and now unfortunately he lost because of a, a tactic here. That's unfortunate. Let's see how that went. We stopped around here, I believe. Black played the move b5. Takes, takes. Rook c1, rook b7, knight e5. White was slowly putting the pressure on the black position. Rook c8, rook b8. That was the big blunder in the position because of the taken, taken, knight c6. White wins an exchange. All right. So, yeah, that was unfortunately for Simon Achtenstein. So, so far, Turkey doing very well. Let's yeah, move on. Yeah, good results for Turkey. Uh, bad news for Norway because they are on the second place right now. But if they lose the match, it's not clear if they will qualify. So this one, this match is very important uh, for Norway team actually because Turkey is qualified, is already qualified. Yep. Exactly. Um, okay, so here we've got an interesting Karakan opening. Let's take a look at how this happened. So it was a Karakan with three c5. Usually you play bishop f5, but c5 has come to the attention uh, recently. It's become more popular. D5 
takes knight c6, f4. This is a move I don't know. But it's very logical, of course. It protects e5. Now, black can win back the pawn like this, but I don't think he chose to do that. He instead went for development. And after c3, the pawn is maybe ready for defending. e6, bishop e3, also good. h5, knight f3, knight f6. Let's see how this went. Some nice construction here for black, but still without a pawn on c5. So let's see what happened. To be honest, I think that white's simply a pawn up. I don't see a lot of compensation for black here. Mm, me neither, just castling rook d1, c4, also some ideas with bishop takes c6 and queen takes a7, ah. so this is another threat. Uh, maybe even long castle and g4, considering that the king is on f8, but this is a more dangerous plan, so mm -hmm. I don't know which plan white will choose, but after both of the plans, uh, white seems to be better. Yeah, I like the c4 idea as well, yeah, just to open up the, the position for the default. The black's rooks are not connected yet, so... It could, would be very hard for black to contest that if this if the default ever gets open after c4. So yeah, I like that. Probably, like you said, rook d1 and short castle with c4 in the next move. And yeah, I'm already thinking of some, uh, what is it, some sacrifices. Like, for example, a move like rook d6 looks very nice at some point, just to give an exchange sacrifice and then... Yeah, just enjoy all the space and the advanced uh, pawns in the position. So, yeah, this looks uh, this looks very nice. I like this plan a lot. Um, yeah, so actually we're cruising through the games like this. I think that is a good position for Turkey once again. So this is not looking too hot for Norway so far, as far as I can see. We have one more board to go, and this one is a more quiet one. This is the women's youth board, board six. Looks like some sort of London system, but not exactly. <laughs> London system without the bishop on f4. Yeah. Uh, something like the Slav, yes, with the bishop on c1. Yeah, the yeah. Slav. Okay. All right. Exchange Slav. Oh, bishop f5, bishop c8. Did you notice? <laughs> I noticed, yeah. I think it's actually the most uh, most played move nowadays, bishop c8. It's, uh, it's theory, I think, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't play this line. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. I've seen this. I've seen this once before, I think. But it looks very strange. But uh, the, the b7 pawn is now well protected, and so it's it's kind of solid for black to play like this. The queen is on b3. That is useful. But after a move like e6 and bishop d6, black is kind of solid. But I do agree. It looks a bit weird, and I think that white has potential to make use of this extra tempo. Okay, this is what happened on the board. Knight e5, bishop d7. Okay, so this is quite funny. Bishop f5, bishop c8, and then bishop d7. So three, and moves I, three moves with the bishop out of nine. Three out of nine, not bad. Yeah, nine. <laughs> 30%. <laughs> yep, and now the other bishop moves to d6. But funnily enough, uh, I think the black's position is extremely solid. I don't think there's anything going on at the moment. So this is how it went, a6, bishop d3, not too weird of moves. Uh, do you like to move g6 here, though? Hmm. Maybe it's not so bad. I was also thinking about knight e7, knight f5 maneuver, or even knight e8, f6, but that's, that's a bit dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe something like knight a5, trying to kick this queen out of b3 and then move the rook to c8. This is also and then maybe knight my mind. Or just queen e7, rook f c8, something solid. Yeah, something solid. Um yeah. Looks good. A lot of ideas. I don't like g6 in particular. I think it's kind of weakening, especially if the position opens in a later stage. But uh, yeah, it is a very solid move. And if you play a move like g4, then the inclusion of g6 and g4 usually favors black, especially because g4 might actually already fall right here. But All right. Um, 
Yeah, I like white a little bit better because we have got a little more space here. Um, yeah, I think uh, white's a little bit better. Would you agree or? Yeah, I also like white a little bit more. Some plants like knight a4, knight b6, or knight a4, knight c5 is... Uh, that's possible, maybe even now, I don't know. Yeah, looks very good. Uh, you do have to account for knight e4 ideas then. But still, Why it's not? a bad it. Yeah, just take it. All right, let's put it on the board. Why not? Knight e4, just take it. And then... Knight e6. Yep, bishop e8. Bishop e8. Okay. It looks, looks very, very uncomfortable, this. You would like to say, okay, you brought the knight to b6, and uh, and what's next? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would like. But yeah, I think the white already has some good plans. I'm not too sure how to continue, though. I would like to play something like d5, but I think that's a bit too much. I don't want to open the position too much because black has the bishop pair. But yeah, rook d1, bishop e1, then yeah, d5. Exactly. This looks uh, this looks very very nice. Yeah. This looks like a very nice idea. Well, of course, the queen will be attacking h4, but uh, bishop e1 and d5 might also be a very good idea at some point. All right, I think we've got all the games. I think we went through all the games of the Turkey-Norway match. Let's check quickly how uh, Croatia is doing against Iceland. That's the one that we really want to match, uh, as well as actually the Denmark-Serbia match. But let's start with Croatia. Uh, yep, this is board one. Ivan Saric, former European champion, playing against Bragi Torfinson from Iceland. Uh, there's a rook attacked over here. The rook needs to move. Probably to f7 or something. And I think white is already close to winning, actually. Same amount of pawns. Yeah, because it's like everything is hanging in black's position in case of rook f7, white may simply take on g6 and take on h5. Yep. Yeah, if the rook moves to f6, it's more or less the same. Mm -hmm. Let me because put... queen g6 and rook can't take. Okay, it can, but we take on f4 and we take on e7. Yep. Uh, also pawn up. Also pawn up, so yeah, this is looking extremely good for Ivan Saric. Shall we take a quick look at how this occurred? I'm always, I feel like Ivan Saric is a really big opening expert. I've seen him play when he became European champion. I actually did a, a report on how, another report on how he won the tournament, but on how some of his game progressed. And so I'm pretty curious to see how he played. He chose the Spanish. And black went for the uh, Steinich setup with knight g e7 and knight g6. I have good memories with this opening from the white side. I think I, it was the only and the one and only time that I managed to beat David Howell in a in a game. David Howell, one of the best players in England now, but that was like uh, 12 years ago. But still good memories. So, all right, mission e3. Bishop e7, knight bd2, short castle, queen e8. Uh, there's a trick in the position. Be careful. Bishop b3. Knight a5, bishop c2, c5. Yeah, it just looked a little bit better for white. More space, no actions yet on the queen side. And knight came to b6, also very nice. f5 on the board, very, very nice. But... White was already very well advanced on the queen side, and now after taking, taking knight b2. White was in total control. Yeah, usually you want to get some activity on the king side with black, but there is nothing going on at the moment, and the knight looks perfect on e4. And this is the current position. Uh, no, not yet. Wait, I scooped ahead a little bit. Well, actually, okay. this is actually what came on the board. The queen b1, rook g5, and this is on the board, rook a8. Just pointing that the knight on b7 is trapped. Yeah, black has to take, I think, and after knight takes, the knight is trapped on b7 because of the knight, yeah, rook e8. 
Right, this looks over actually. Very nice game, very straightforward from Ivan Sadic as far as I can see. Yeah, and perfect opening execution as well, also as far as I can see. All right, moving on, next game. Uh, oh boy, there are two knights on the rims, actually three knights on the rim. What do you think, first thoughts? Uh, this is something crazy. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know even uh, what's going on. But knight from h3 can at least move to f4, while the knights on a3 and a4, I'm not sure about their future. And yeah. we also got a request in the chat uh, from Irrelevant Lama uh, to see Blagojevic board uh, board board from Serbia. Uh, right. Yeah, we will try to cover this game. Thanks. Let's take a look. Um, for your let's... request. All right, let's take a look. Uh, so that is board three, I guess, or which board is that exactly? Well, let's go over anyways to that match because that match is a big one because also Serbia needs to win, I think, in order to qualify for the next division so it's a good way to move there as well um which uh, one okay. is board number four as as i understand okay so that is i think two three four there you go i'm sorry but this is not one of the most exciting games <laughs> <laughs> Uh, being one pawn up, yeah, these pawns, connected pawns, past pawn, they will just start moving. Yeah, exactly. So, unfortunately for the black player, this looks very good for Tiana Blagojevic for Serbia. Um, yeah, just, just start running with those pawns and it should be more or less winning for white. Well, actually, what do you think about uh, the exchanges of the knight takes e6? So white played king f1, but could we also have played knight takes e6? I don't know, but I see that we are frozen actually in Twitch. <laughs> Both of us, I hope this this will be resolved soon, but we need oh. some help. <laughs> All right, uh, so we are frozen on Twitch, it seems. I don't think it's my internet connection this time, so I'm a little bit relieved with that. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I actually think we're still good. I think that, yeah, I actually think we're still good, Anna. Yeah, no, it's okay. No, it's okay. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had enough of technical issues, so yeah, let's just uh, continue without them. Uh, you scared me. <laughs> I was already trying to talk with the producer, like, what's going on? But okay, never mind, we are good. Okay, never mind, all good. Thumbs up from our producer in uh, in his studio as well. So, yeah, knight takes e6, f takes. Uh, yeah, okay, let's continue. So, my question was, knight takes e6, was that a good exchange of pieces? What do you think? Um, just a second. Yes, yes, it's good. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next moving game. Moving on, yes. <laughs> right, yeah, so looking good for Serbia. This looks like a clear win, uh, in my opinion. All right, so yeah, let's move on with this match. Now we are here anyway, so let's move on with board one. Mats Anir Anderson for Denmark playing against uh, Alexander Indic for Serbia. Looks good for white this first glance. A good bishop, good knights, but I prefer the bishop slightly in an open position like this. And also white has the rook file over here. Temporarily a pawn up, by the way. Yeah, by the way, two king takes up. five. Two pawns? Have you oh. were two pawns up? But after, yeah. yeah. You are correct. Uh, white is actually two pawns up, my mistake. So b4. So actually, if two pawns up, then white looks very, very good now. Yeah? They looked good, but with two pawns up, they look even better. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So 
B3, important move. I was considering a move like rook c5, but that might be very, very dangerous after rook f1, king h2, rook f2. Winning the pawn on b2 and checking. So now the bishop, this pawn might become very dangerous for white. So that is why black, uh, sorry, white played the move b3 here. King takes e5. Okay, there you go. One pawn up. <laughs> you predicted that, yeah. Given the b2 pawn was not advisable, I agree. A b3 was a normal move. But yes, white is a pawn up at the moment, but the knight on e3 is quite strong, so it's not so easy to convert this game, uh, to convert this advantage for white. I think so too. I, I try, I'm trying to find some mating attacks for black, maybe. But uh, yeah, for example, if you check king h3, rook f1, you're not even threatening mate because of the bishop on e4. So yeah, the bishop is ruling the world in this game. Very nice one. Not bishop f3, of course. Mouse my, my bad. So rook b5. Maybe this just wins another pawn for white. Yeah, I don't see how black can. Black can play knight c2, actually. But then rook b7 attacking the other pawn. I think the white is clearly winning, actually. More or less. Winning. Maybe, yeah. At right. least much better for white. Not sure about winning already, but... Yeah, a lot <laughs> but a very better. pleasant position. Yeah, let's leave it at that. Moving on to the next game. Schoenberg, Hansen versus Ivan Ivanisovic. This looks funny. Mm. White is an exchange up, but this pawn is very, very dangerous. Oh, actually, it's already a promotion. Knight takes c1, and okay, white is now material up. It seems like uh, black is now material up. It seems like black is just very, very good here. I, I'm trying to find a way to win this pawn as black. Maybe just knight e2 check and knight c3. Or then rook d6 will come but i agree it's important to keep these two pawns on the board uh, a4 and b6 for black for white white would prefer to trade these pawns and to trade one pair of rook and then just stay solid we have seen some similar uh position yep. today uh, but uh, in this game black simply won the a4 pawn and now just b5, bishop c4. Yeah, b5, bishop c4. Looks uh, looks like a very good suggestion there. Maybe the only idea white has is something like h5, rook b8, rook d8, and try to say, well, maybe he doesn't see it, you know? But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it looks over. I think that, of course, uh, black should be winning here. So that's a good result for Denmark, bad result for Serbia. Uh, let me see if I already have some clutch results here. We've got here a result between the Philippines. I think this is the last, uh, the fifth board. So this is a youth board. A lot of material down, but uh, rook takes h2 is just made. So a point for the Philippines. Let's move over to this one. Ireland versus Chile. Yeah, the results are coming in more and more. So this is a good result for Chile. We've got here a result between Norway and Turkey. Um, it seems like actually Ekaterina Talek unfortunately lost her game against Sheila Bart Stanford. So Norway back on track with a 1-1 score so far, I believe. That's actually surprising because uh, the last time we saw the, uh, Ekaterina Talek's position, she had a pleasant edge, but then something got out of control. Most probably, yeah, and uh, she lost the game, so it's one-one. What's happening in the other, uh, on the other boards of this match? This is like the very important match of this round. And let's take a look at how JJ is doing uh, with the black pieces here. Uh, seems to be not able to make some sort of mating net on the king on H2, and white is two pawns up. So this looks winning for white somehow. Uh, actually, it's white to move. White to move. Maybe a second pawn, but after bishop d3. I guess just rook a6 and then start running with your pawns. I don't know. Looks uh, looks very good for... Rook a6, maybe then. Rook 
No. Rook a2, king g2. No. The yeah, knight on d4 is perfectly placed. It's like on the very center of the board. <laughs> uh, not allowing king f3. Yeah. Restricting the bishop also. Everything, yeah. So in the other position, uh, we had a good bishop on e4 and a good knight on e3. And then the bishop was dominating. But in this case, the knight is dominating over the bishop. That's kind of funny to see. Okay, so I'm wondering how the game progressed. So b6 played. Rook takes. And probably knight c6. Yeah, I was thinking this might work, but I'm not 100% sure. Rook a2. Mm -hmm. Trying to create some perpetual. Yeah, rook f6, I suppose. Ah, oh, but then you've got rook b2. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Still fighting? Still fighting. I'm wondering if I can mate somehow with 95. Oh, Doesn't mate. Like I am kind to you and you are thinking about the mate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's still not over. Yeah, I'm not sure that the spawn sacrifice was necessary. But maybe White calculated this to a win. Let's take a look. We are closing in on the time trouble as well, everybody. So this is actually the current position. Okay, so Black defending like a madman. Like I know him as well. Actually, I played a, an online blitz game against him once, just one, uh, because we had a, what was it again, a uh, um, sub, sub battle on Twitch, you know, we were both streamers. And he actually still let, I, I was totally winning the whole game, but then there was this clutch still made in the end. So I know that uh, JJ is actually a very, um, how do you say, tough guy to... Uh, very stubborn I mean, one, yeah. <laughs> very stubborn one. Yeah, I was looking for that word indeed. Yeah, and no mate just yet for White. Uh, he was looking for something that I was looking for too, but I don't see a mate just yet. Just, yeah, he's just moving and... around with his knight and hoping for some mate somewhere. Rook F1, we already, we already seen this position. I think we've got this on the board already once, yeah. yeah I would so play something one. like rook b5, or rook f1, king g2. <clears throat> I don't know. It looks winning for white, but it's not exactly clear how, yeah? Yeah, rook b5 I would have played, but yeah, what about yeah, rook e6 is normal, but not really contributing to anything. Yeah, rook actually, you have, to, you have How to be about the right. other results? Because yep. I, I see some games just finished. Yep. Board four. Win for Turkey. Win for Turkey. Board four. Oh, board. This is board four, actually. Mm -hmm. A draw. This is board three. We already saw this. This is a win for Norway. So, a draw, a win for Norway. So, still a tie. This one is a win for. Turkey. For Turkey. So Turkey, uh, two and a half, one and a half so far. Then this game is still going on. This is, I think, the last board. Let's take a look at the position. Okay, this is also looking very, very good for Turkey. So mm -hmm. Norway, maybe Turkey. not clutching it out in the last round. Mm, yes, and uh, that means that it's not clear if uh, Norway will make it to the top division. Yeah, they need some miracles to qualify now. Um, I think this is also, yeah, they still two boards going. They need wins on both boards to qualify. But with the knight on c5 in this position, I don't think that's really possible. I think that maximum they have a draw, Turkey versus Norway. Everybody, also take a look on the left side of the board. You can see there the updated results so far. Croatia actually uh, coming in clutch in the last round, winning 6-0. Uh, and Sweden also winning the match against Guatemala. Big result, however. Serbia not winning against Denmark. They are 3-1 down. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, Norway yes, would be I, safe. 
Yeah, I was warning because look, German, Denmark before this round, they were on place nine, while Serbia was on place three. So that meant Serbia had a much better tournament. Uh, but surprisingly, it's not clear if uh, they will qualify because uh, they will not win this match for sure. Uh, it's very likely Serbia is out. It seems like it. Uh, the difference between Serbia and Norway is not so much if you look at the tie breaks. It's only half a board point. So if they both lose the match, then board points could become very, very uh, important here. And maybe if they have the same amount of board points, then we can see the tie break system. That would be a fun thing to show in uh, yeah, what that is about, but of course we are only going to do that if necessary. So yeah, this seems like a win for Turkey, and that clutches out a win for Turkey. So yeah, they have already won the match. Norway needs a miracle to qualify. Serbia needs to lose with big points. Well, actually, yeah, they just need to lose. I think Norway is 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 through if Serbia loses. Yeah, I think Serbia that's... lost for two. And Norway is true. And Norway is true. Yeah. But they were very lucky with that. And Serbia was very unlucky to lose the last match. Yeah. So all the games, all the results are closing in. Um, yeah. We still got JJ, stubborn as he is, uh, playing this on. And actually, he's got a rook ending, which looks more or less a draw. He is still playing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's. Uh... How to make a draw in this position? Rook a5? Yeah, just rook a5, e6, and rook e5. I don't see how white can make progress after that. Cut. Cut out the king. Cut off the king. Indeed. Rook e6. Um, rook Maybe e6. This, this and this, but a better try. You know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You're probably going to see. You're gonna probably going to do this against me, but I want to show it. Don't play king f5 because then it's a mate, everybody. Let's not hope that is not going to be on the board. But of course. I like this line uh, and I hope that won't happen. That won't no. happen on the board because yeah. that would be painful. Exactly. But very good defense, very good defense from Chemil Jan. He was, uh, I would say, completely lost, but he was fighting till the very end. And uh, yes. Yes, he yes, yes. Played. Rook F3. G3 made it. G3 played though. Okay, I would have taken the pawn, but I don't care. Okay. King E2. Maybe he wants to play for a win. He is an <laughs> advantage player. I know that as well. But King G4, Rook F8, G2 looks very good for. Well, actually, White needs to be careful. Okay, uh, E6, E7. White is out of danger, I think. Yeah, the king needs to just go to D3. That's true. G2, rook G8, looks normal, looks okay. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like a draw, looks like a simple draw. Uh, this is the last game, yeah? The last game of this yeah. round, the last game of this pool, and we will get the results. And uh, it will become completely clear which teams qualify to the top division. Just yeah. a few minutes, just a few minutes. And we'll have official confirmation, indeed. So let's see if uh, if JJ can clutch this out. And let's see. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> what about taking on G2 and F6 now? Maybe that's winning for white now. Yep. What are they saying again? If you have two pawns on the sixth rank, then it's worth at least a rook, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh boy, this is, looks losing. This looks losing. Yeah. Oh, oh no, he no didn't man. make it until the very end. Was this half a point important? This may be important for Norway because uh, they are fighting, uh, fighting yeah. to get qualified. Yeah, Turkey was qualified anyway. Oh, actually, if uh, they only needed a draw, I think, to to qualify for the next round. Yeah. So winning here is is extra special. I think a draw was just. Uh, was good enough, but hey, why not win if you if you have um, a winning position? Yeah, why not just play on and win and make it more clear for everybody? 
Yeah, so congratulations to Norway, but also to Turkey, of course. Turkey winning the match. That wasn't even necessary, but they did it anyhow. And the, the third team, I think, is Croatia. Yeah, Croatia, Croatia. also qualifying for the next division. With a 6 0 Overtaking Norway, so Croatia is on place two, and Norway made it. Norway made it uh, with 13 points, uh, Serbia also on 13 points, and with a painful loss in the last round, they are not qualified. Unfortunately for them, uh, well, we have to commend them, of course, for their play. They played very well, very close. And they made it very exciting for us to, to watch this pool, of course. So, Yeah, wow. Another pool down. Uh, this weekend is coming to a close like this. Uh, pool D also finished. Of course, we'll get the official standings and the official results of the last round to you in a little bit. And actually, we also, while this round was playing, we also had have got news about pool E. They started with round seven while we were looking at round uh, nine of pool D. So here you go. These are the results from round seven pool E. Argentina winning woof against, uh, why did I say woof? Well, anyways, against Ecuador, five and a half half. Colombia winning against Mexico. Ecuador was actually, I think, in third place in that pool. So that they lost against Argentina is not a good uh, result for Ecuador. They're, uh, well, anyways, Moving on, Montenegro losing their match against Costa Rica, two and a half, three and a half. I like I said, Colombia winning five and a half, half. Scotland losing one five against Bolivia, and England losing against Hung Hungary. That is actually a, a surprising result, right? England was the favorite, I think, in that match. Uh, I am not so sure because both of these teams uh, are very strong and Hungary was leading and Hungary is still leading. Uh, so basically Hungary, well, most of all, they have already secured the place in the top division. They mm. have 14 points right now. England is with 12 points, Colombia with 10 and uh, two teams with eight points, Argentina and Ecuador. Uh, yep. These are the teams that still have chances to qualify while Mexico, Bolivia, Costa Rica, Montenegro and Scotland will not make it to the top three. Yes, and we will show you the standings, of course, after this short break, because once again, we've got a nice surprise for you in store. So we'll go on a very short break and we'll be back with a surprise guest. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back very shortly. See you just in a few minutes. Stay tuned.
Hello, everybody, and we are back uh, with, like we said, our surprise cats. We've got actually the player right here that we last saw on the board. Uh, I call him JJ. So welcome to the broadcast, my man. How are you feeling? Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it was a long game, in fact, but I'm very happy that the team qualified. That's what is most important for us. So feeling great, I have to say. It was a bit of a tension in the morning. Technically morning here and the evening there, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but we made it and we actually qualified. I think we won the division, so we're happy. Yeah, you certainly did. Yeah. So uh, for everyone, uh, you are living, of course, in the in the states, as I know. So yes. that's why it's a uh, different time there. So yeah, uh, it was a smooth sailing, I think, for Turkey. So um, yeah, was it, was there ever a moment when you were in doubt that you were a little bit anxious, maybe? So in the morning, we were six out of six. And then the first round of the day playing Sweden, if we would win, I think we would guarantee the spot. Mm -hmm. But uh, we drew the match. And then the next match against Serbia, uh, tough opponents. And of course, we were confident, but it would have been easier if we would win in the very first match. There was some stress, but we won against Serbia and we won against Norway. So... I'm very happy. Um, we were all confident that we can do it. And in fact, we did it. Yeah. So I actually had a funny question for you, because if you managed to win the last game, I actually believe that you would have kicked out Norway from their qualification spot. Were, were you aware of that while you were playing? For well, if I would win like my game instead of losing. Yeah. Oh, I so was not aware of that, but I defended the whole game and there was a moment yeah. where I could go rook f3 check and pick up his f4 pawn yeah. and I saw the chance of playing for a win with black after g3, king, g4 and some activity and I was like, I'll go for the win and uh, hopefully that my teammates were not uh, will not get angry at me and uh, I tried to win and I think I lost. Hopefully, um, yeah. I did not impact too much, but I wasn't aware of the situation. I was just playing my game. So I wanted to win. That's all. There was nothing at stake anyway. Turkey had already qualified yeah. with a big margin, actually. So you guys are like three match points ahead of the rest uh, of Croatia, actually. So, yeah, well done. Um, yeah. How are you looking forward to the top division? Absolutely. I'm very excited about that. I think we managed to qualify, but now the real task is going to begin. So we're going to fight and try to do our best and keep on going. Of course. All right. Anna, do you have any final questions? Uh, I'd like to wish good luck to you and to Turkish team uh, in the top division. Uh, the last question for you, uh, how are you doing in this uh, lockdown times? Uh, are you focused on chess? Are you streaming? Are you doing any other activities? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm doing a little bit of everything, streaming, and I'm also going to school here at St. Louis University. So I had summer classes during this lockdown. And uh, in fact, my new semester is beginning tomorrow. So a lot of school, a lot of chess, a lot of everything, I should say, trying to manage my time well and find time for everything. Right. Full of plan, uh, great. Uh, we are very glad we had uh, you in this broadcast. I think you should get a big present from the team of Norway. I think you deserved it. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, anyway. Uh, have a nice day. Have a uh, good preparation for the top division. And uh, yes, uh, good Thank luck you. once again for your team. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you, you so coming. much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, JJ. All right. Uh, yeah, and we are back. <laughs> there was a we are not ready, yeah. but we are back. Yeah. We were just pushed into the live scene at a uh, uh, very quick pace, but it's fine. Well, we are back, everybody, like we were supposed to. So, of course, uh, just a quick shout out also to JJ. Uh, I collaborated with him in one of my Twitch streams. So, 
just a shout out for him. And uh, his Twitch channel actually is the last seven samurai. So give him a follow. He will try. He will probably be streaming very shortly again, like he said. So, yeah, take uh, take that into account. Follow him right there. And uh, yeah, let's take also a quick look, of course, at the pool D standing. So, like we said, Turkey is uh, the has been the big winner in this pool. Like they actually should have, because in they were a big favorite on rating. They have 17 points. Croatia doing very good as well with the second place, and Norway as well coming in clutch on board points with 35 and a half board points, and Serbia 34 and a half board points. So, like you said, Anna, uh, he deserves a present from Norway. Mr. JJ, and yeah, those are the three teams that are qualified for the next top division. JJ is very excited about that. So we'll see Turkey, Croatia, and Norway back then in the next weekend. All right, that's it for now. We'll have a short break, everyone, and we will, will wow, words are hard sometimes. Uh, we will be back uh, after the break with, of course, the last pool that we're still going to do, pool E. Uh, yeah, that's where things are still undecided. So don't go anywhere, stretch your legs, bet the dog. Uh, no time for a nap, don't do that. And we'll be back in a few minutes. Two rounds in pool E are still to go and we will be back just in a few minutes and we will cover all the games of pool E, which will be actually the last pool for today. Stay tuned, see you soon, see you very, very soon. <laughs>
Hello, everybody, and we are back with, of course, uh, the further coverage of the 2020 Online Olympiad. I'm still Roland, still here, and also, of course, still with Anna Muzichuk. How are you doing, Anna? Good. We had a very short break, and I think we are ready to cover the last round of Pool E. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, so, so far, the games have not yet started, but let's remind everyone how the standings currently are in Pool E. So, we've got Hungary in clear first place. They actually beat England in the last round uh, for first place, so they did very, very well there. And they already more or less qualified. I don't think that they can be catched by more than two teams. So, Hungary already done with the qualification, more or less. And England and Colombia also looking very good in for the qualification. One other big result was Argentina actually beating Ecuador in the previous round, I believe. And Ecuador therefore dropping back to place five. And they really have to step it up. Will they, will they qualify for the next round? And actually, we've got a very clutch match going, coming up in round eight. I was going to say, but round nine, of course, the big match as well. We've got Ecuador versus Hungary uh, in round eight. Also a big match, by the way. Ecuador is going to have a really, really tough matchup uh, to qualify. Also clutch, Argentina just beat Ecuador to come to fourth place. And they have got a direct clash with Colombia for third place. So everything is still open for the third place. I think that Hungary and England... Look already more or less safe, but uh, yeah, we still have got a lot of uh, action to go. So let's see what is happening there. Let me find uh, the games. Yes, I would say that uh, no team is actually safe because if uh, our viewers may remember before the uh, beginning, uh, like in the beginning of the previous stream, I was saying like Serbia is most likely qualified because they had uh, to play versus Denmark and Denmark didn't do actually very well. But Denmark beat Serbia and in the end Serbia got out, what was very surprising. So I wouldn't say any team is actually, you know, uh, secured. Uh, maybe Hungary, yeah. Hungary has very good chances to qualify, but this is the only team. <laughs> Really, 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 really good chances to qualify. They won all their matches so far. And 14 match points, as we could have seen in the other pools, I think was already enough always to, to qualify for the, for the next division. But yeah, nothing is certain yet for the rest of the teams. England still might not qualify if things go horribly wrong there. So we will yeah, just keep an eye, of course, on every result there. Yeah, take a look at the left side. No, that's the right side, the left side of the board to find the results uh, updated. We'll try to update them as soon as we can so that you can see how your team is doing. All right, so let's dive into the games. I'm trying to find the big match uh, here. So that would be Ecuador versus Hungary or Argentina versus Colombia. I think Argentina versus Colombia has my preference to look first into but I need to find all the games first. All right, this is one, I think. Yeah, this is one, but let me find board one first. Here it is, uh, Alan Pichot, yeah. on the first board. I believe it's the first board for Argentina. Exactly. All right. <clears throat> so this is an interesting opening. I think we had a lot of French openings today, actually. That's kind of interesting. E4, E6, also in this game. So D4, D5, Knight C3, Bishop B4, E5, and the B6. So this is more or less the Simon Actestein approach here, where he tried to trade off the, the bad bishop on C8. A very positional line, but it seems like White knows what he's doing because he's going for a straight attack with the rook on H3 and rook G3. So, yeah, what do you think about this position, Anna? Can you tell us a bit more about this? Perhaps. I, I am an E4 player myself. Uh, I don't uh, play exactly uh, this line when black plays for small B6. Uh, but, well, this line, this approach with H4, H5 is quite reasonable. The 
uh, regrouping of the rook, rook h3, rook g3, it's a typical plan. Uh, with uh, this plan, uh, white forced black to play rook h7, the rook on h7 is a bad piece because it's difficult uh, to imagine this rook will be uh, in the game very quickly. It will be just the passive rook, while the rook on g3, it can attack the pawn on g7, and sometimes later on it can be switched to actually the queen's side. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the good news for black is that uh, black has already played bishop a6, trying to trade this bishop. We have already spoken about this bishop before. It's very important for black to get rid of it. Uh, so that uh, there is also no bishop d3 because just imagine the bishop st still stays on c8 white would have just played bishop d3 and uh, yeah just uh, attacking the rook and that would be all over for black but with the bishop on a6 uh, the game is still on uh, what about the plans for black and for white? For black, it's more or less easy. Uh, the light squared bishop will be off the board very soon. Then black will try to push c5, knight c6, rook c8, uh, knight g7, knight f5, something like that. While uh, white will perhaps go bishop d2, castling long. Uh, maybe a four or five sometimes, maybe knight f3, knight h4, maybe knight e2 or knight h3, knight f4, and then sometimes knight g6 ideas. So yeah, there are plenty of plans and depending on what each side does, uh, the other side will react accordingly. Yep. Oh, wow. That's a deep explanation of this position. Absolutely true. There are, ju are just so many ideas here for white. Uh, and black, of course, yeah. So black is positionally has got the more easier plan with c5, rook c8, knight e7, and knight f5. Those are very easy moves to play. Black does not really need to think about that. While white, um, if white plays very slow, like knight h3 and knight f4, very normal moves, then black has knight e7 and knight f5, followed by c5. Looks already quite dangerous for white to allow a thing like that. So I believe that white needs to be very, very accurate here in order to be better, very quick. And I actually I actually would prefer black here for the moment because it's very hard for white to break through. And there is also no drawing mechanism. I think the 97, 95, C5, like you said, is just such an easy idea that I think I would prefer black here actually. Yeah, this line is very similar to the line. Maybe we can quickly show you. Starting with the moves e4, e6, d4, d5, knight c3, bishop b4, exactly the same. And then uh, not b6, e5, but e5, c5, yep. uh, a3, bishop takes c3, uh, b takes c3, queen a5, uh, queen g4, let's say king f8. So we see a very similar position. Then later on black plays queen a4. And uh, yeah, the ideas are more or less the same. The king is on f8. Uh, the ideas of h4, h5 are also very possible in this position too. Uh, so yeah, it's just the similarity between the lines. So maybe some of the viewers play this line, maybe some of the viewers play another line, but they can combine the ideas which are coming from different lines. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a very good uh, general point there to point out as well. Like uh, if you play different openings, then you also see more and more of the same ideas in certain positions, yeah. Um, all right, let's move on to another game. We've got here Benjamin uh, Gladura. He was actually my teammate for the Oslo Trolls in the Pro Chess League. So um, he was a guest for the Oslo Trolls um, and he was doing pretty well. So how is he doing? He's a very young player, by the way, but he is good enough to be one of the top players in Hungary. So there you go. He is... Um, Slightly better. He has got more space. He's got the bishop versus the knight. But black is extremely solid. It's going to take a while for white to break through. Yes, I agree. It's also the question uh, with which piece it's better to recapture. I'm not so sure. Um, 
Yeah, will it be door number one? C takes D5. Will it be door number two? Bishop takes D5, or will it be door number three? Queen takes D5. Which door will you take? And where it will lead to? <laughs> uh, nobody knows. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think I would personally. I think I would go for. I don't know. I don't like this B5 move, so maybe I would go for door number one. C takes D5. The plan is also quite easy after this because you're just going to slowly try and start pushing the pawns. Although on the other hand, uh, you do need to be a bit careful about trading off too many pieces. For example, after queen d4, black might at some point try to take. Um, that's not possible right now, I believe. But at some point, black might try to start and trade off everything on the board. And then black is more or less okay. It doesn't work in this position because of f4. But uh, yeah, after queen d4, let's say black plays a move like king g8. On the next move, black would try and trade off everything. And then it's more or less okay for black. Yes, I agree that black should trade the rooks because this will give uh, black more space. Uh, while white's idea maybe sometimes to play bishop h3 and actually not allow to... Okay, allowing one rook trade but not allowing the next one <laughs> yeah that's a very nice move to uh, to show yeah bishop h3 to uh take the c file for white so yeah i think white is just slightly better c takes d5 board uh, door number one is not the only good move i think also bishop takes d5 door number three would also be pretty good I don't know, because uh, you do, the bishop has a nice diagonal like this, and a move like b5, what I was afraid of, might actually not be the biggest worry for white, because first of all, the knight is still there, and this bishop is going to be a beast over this diagonal. So, yeah, maybe in hindsight, door number three or door number two would have been best. <laughs> but okay, let's move on to board number three. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. you're going very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the board number three. Uh, Pop, Petra Pop versus uh, Marta Fierro. Marta Fierro was earlier also in a broadcast with us. She was one of the highest scores players in, the, in this pool. And let's see if she can clutch out this game as well. Uh, very difficult to assess this position. And what are your first thoughts on it? White is two pawns up, but the queen is on b7. The bishops are still on f1 and c1. The king is still in the center. And uh, that means black has some counterplay, but black has to play very quickly. Something like rook e8 is coming to my mind, threatening bishop d5. Or some sacrifices. Uh, I'm not sure bishop d4 works. I even think it doesn't work because bishop d4, knight d4, knight c5 will be met just with queen b4, yes, yeah, so this does not work, but please check these ideas because sometimes it works. Uh, what else? So rook e8 or just some retreat like um, bishop b6? I don't uh, know. But... b2, I suppose. <clears throat> but maybe let's start with some active options like rook e8 because I... I... I strongly believe uh, black should play active. For example, after bishop e2, we may actually try bishop c4 so, or something like bishop c4, d takes c5, knight c5, then the knight is coming to d3, and it's very dangerous. Yeah, already a very nice idea, nice piece sacrifice there. So if I don't fall for the knight for, but for example, go to c6, uh, oh, actually, the queen is trapped. After rook c8. Yeah. <laughs> you are a bit surprised, <laughs> but yeah, the, the queen is trapped. I thought it was, yeah, I thought the queen, okay, I did not expect that one. I thought that we were playing for the mate over here, but we were just trying to grab the queen, actually. Yeah, I started talking about the mate, but so suddenly the queen is trapped. Yeah, I mean, there's probably also another idea for black somehow. Um, bishop takes it two, knight takes, um, maybe something like knight, knight three actually, and then yeah, and let's then knight e five or yeah, just to show our viewers the ideas like knight e five, for example, knight e five can't be taken because of the mate on d one. Well, in this position, it does not work because the 
a white is not obliged to take on e5, white can play something like queen c2 or queen a4, maybe queen c2 even safer, uh, mm. but yeah. Covering everything, so, but yeah, there are some tricks like this in the position. Maybe rook c8 is also good, and then take on c1 at some point. Looks also very interesting, but yeah, I think easiest is just to grab the queen. That's a nice uh, surprise there for black, actually. So yeah, I like that. Rook e8, uh, bishop e2. Now, uh, if uh, if another idea is to play bishop e3 instead, so not to allow bishop c4 ideas, but also here there are a lot of active ideas. For example, you could play something like rook b8 is also an interesting move at some point, maybe even knight g4 at some point. It's, it's harder in this position, though. I mean, with bishop b2, bishop c4 was a very straightforward idea. But how would you continue here? Mm -hmm. What about, let's check rook, rook b8 first. Because right. it's, I'm going to uh, go to a6. Uh, yes. Um, we may still try something like rook b2, dx c5, knight c5, some <laughs> to, at least to have some fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wanted to mate in one, but that's not possible. Let's grab the queen once again, yeah? Yeah, so right. bishop 5 does not work. Uh, white has to retreat the queen to a3, perhaps. And, and maybe this is okay, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't seem to work. You don't have a mate here. In the... It was and... like going down in flames. <laughs> yeah. Good try, but it didn't work. We tried, uh, at the very least, yeah. Um, let's see what else could be an idea then. I want to try and make this work somehow. <clears throat> we could if... try and play... Hmm. This bishop is very annoying. This one. You want to try uh, your move, knight g4, or, or let's think for a while and find something better? Try <laughs> to find something better. <laughs> I don't dislike this, but I also don't really see it follow-up of the d takes c what about rook b6 just uh, chasing the queen queen a4 okay. would be four something like that well, that looks interesting Queen's and then just oh, okay we can take on d4 take take take, take. but white is not obliged to take white can simply play uh, uh bishop e2 looks okay for white okay so yeah, after bishop b3, it's not so clear how black should continue, yeah? Mm. Uh, bishop b6. Yeah, maybe we just need a bishop, but bishop b6, I don't like. You should you should play actively when you are two pawns down and uh, when you have initiative. You can't lose temples. No. Yeah, I, I totally agree there. Uh, by the way, do you have you ever played a game against Petra Pop? Uh, I am not sure. I have played some games with Marta Fierro, with Petra Pop. Oh. Right. I played with many other girls from Hungarian team. I played many games with Gara Sisters, with Juan Tronchan, uh, with, uh, with Ildiko Madal. Yeah, but I don't remember any games versus Petra Pop. All right. Well, I gave it a shot. Let's see. Next game um, we've got here. Carla Heredia versus Anita Gara. Um, mm -hmm. All right, F6 on the board. First thing I notice is this one. Me too. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, this pawn is like the first thing that catches, uh, that attracts your eye because it takes F6 is more or less uh, forced. Rook takes F6. And then I don't see the good way where to place the queen because after any move, uh, black can take on f2 yeah, I with guess. the bishop with the rook i don't know how it's, uh, it's a full pawn it's a full pawn yeah this is simply looking uh, amazing for black just rook a f8 just try uh, uh, maybe bishop c6 or knight c6 maybe even e5 at some point or maybe the most solid way sorry i brought you to the sacrifice mode to the what to the sacrifice mode the sacrifice move, yeah, 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 I want to, well, e5 doesn't really work, yeah, because the, this is the sacrifice that she's talking about, I think, so, <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, of course, not what I wanted, but maybe at some point a move like e5 could be good. I think, actually, I was going to try, actually, the, the solid 
uh, move. I think in the in your streams you're actually called Miss Solid. Am I right? Right. Oh you're... yeah, especially when uh, Miss Messi is in the stream, Elizabeth Betts. I think I am much more solid than she is. So she's Miss Messi. I am Miss Solid, uh, but it doesn't mean that I am, you know, like a very dry player. Actually, I'm quite an active player when it comes yeah. to my teams. <laughs> I absolutely know that actually for my uh, Dutch repertoire and actually my Dutch, uh, how do you say, uh, yeah, repertoire DVDs that I that are available on ginger.com. <laughs> Check it out, everybody. I also checked a lot of your games and you're really, really active. Yeah, you always try to go for the mate and push your pawns and play the most aggressive line sometimes. So, yeah. I, uh, yeah, Miss Solid, I was a bit surprised when I saw that actually, but. Yeah, so my, my link to the Miss Solid thing was I was actually going to try and play very solid here with Queen D4, just straight off the Queens and say, yep, uh, black is a pawn up. Uh, but black has the initiative, so I don't believe we should try to trade the Queens right now. Okay. Why? Or you just want to make things easier, yeah? Yeah, we need to get Miss Aggressive in here. How do we do that? How do we get Miss uh, Aggressive? Uh, yes. How do we get that uh, that aggressiveness in the position? Like Rook AF8, I guess. Well, it's a pawn up for Black, uh, and uh, yeah, it's the matter of taste uh, how um, Black would like to continue, but it's clearly much better for black maybe let's take a look at some other games uh, as uh, many of them are running absolutely madden let's go uh we've got here board oh. five Think about it <laughs> mm. wait this is up. yeah I was, I was i just finished but counting the... yeah so this is six pawns versus five i also saw the g ball over here um actually this looks very very good for white yeah i think this might already be close to winning actually after rook g1 I... queen g4 i or copied white. some line like queen f5 rook g1 king h8 queen c7 rook g8 rook takes g8 rook takes g8 and then uh, rook d1 or castling and then and then just rook d8 i think it's a perfect line <clears throat> I actually agree there. That's a, you had no choice. A perfect line, yeah. So queen takes f5 might actually be a big mistake then, yeah? So, and that is why white is doing really, really well here. Because you have this threat with f takes e6, you have also rook g1 ideas. I think maybe black needs to start bailing out somehow with, um, I don't know, how do you bail out even, you know? you have an idea maybe i think it's not so easy to find an idea for for black maybe white is just simply better their pawn up so so that's it yeah all right that's it let's move on to board number six that almost rhymed not exactly all right so we've got here Gawain jones oh, actually that was the last game of that match so let's move on to, well, let's take a look at how Gawain Jones is doing. A former 2700 player, uh, still one of the top players in England. Uh, tough to say. Black has a big threat with queen a2 and rook c8. White needs to do something about that. Just maybe some move like queen c3 looks good enough. Maybe... Uh... Computer prefers white, yes, but why? I don't know. It's not Maybe. so clear. Queen d6 that? is very risky. Uh -huh. Check. Check, rook c8, king d3, or... <laughs> I guess the king <laughs> just wants to go for a little stroll in the position. It's just some yeah. bold guess, but maybe it's... <laughs> he's just uh, he's walking the dog. He's not doing anything. He's just, uh, just uh, yeah, you know, like... Um, I'm on the middle of the board. <laughs> and I feel safe. All right. Mm, queen b3, would you? I think it's okay. Yeah, for white. I don't see a mate anywhere. 
uh, queen b3, three. but after queen b3, we don't go to e4. We don't do that. It's a little bit yeah. too much. Yeah. So the stroll is actually, we're just going to check in with the neighbors over here to f1. <laughs> and uh, yeah, white should be, yeah, just very, very good. Yeah. But well, queen d6, uh, yeah, when you're playing the game, it, it looks so risky. Was it actually played in the game? Uh, let's see. Uh, no, we're still queen a7. Um, so, yeah, yeah it's so, very difficult to take such a decision. Yeah, indeed. Ah, queen d6 played. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's a bit surprising. That's amazing. That's amazing. I want to stick here for a little while, actually, actually to see if uh, if the king is going to go to the neighbors like this. But um, yeah, otherwise, black probably has got some bailout moves, like, for example, a move like, I don't know. Well, first of all, I would get the queen over here, I think, and then maybe just try and play something like rook e8 or something. But queen b2, why not king b3? Because now black can simply take a pawn. Yeah. You don't want to lose your family. I mean, if you if you check in with the neighbors, then you need to make sure that your family is okay. Oh, poor pawn. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's... Uh, yeah, maybe the pawn is not even important because, uh, yeah, even in the rook ending... Actually, maybe the pawn would have been uh, gone anyhow because if you go here, queen b3, king, and then black can take the pawn anyway. This but does maybe better to, a better position. Yeah, the king on e2 is safer than the king on d2, so king d3 and king e2 root looks looks safer to my yeah. eye. <laughs> to my eye too, I, I totally agree there. Uh, so king d2 on the board, pawn taken, king e1, and actually now this is an extra option. No, it's not scratch mm -hmm. that, but... Um, queen e6, yeah, exactly. queen e5, queen e6, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's grab another pawn, yeah? And you, you win the rook. Not the best idea. Mm hmm All right. Uh, yep, yeah, all right. So, um, interesting position. It looks to me like this is the current position. Black needs to be careful about this queen of six check. If black does that, then probably black is okay. For example, a move like e4 would be okay, I think, yeah? Then H takes. Oh, that's very complicated. It's not so easy. Maybe just queen c3 and then try to trade queens or something. Yeah, it's like the big question whose king is actually safer, the king on h8 or the king on e1. Looks like, strangely enough, the king on e1, because this is a big threat. Yep. Well, this was an interesting uh, game. We've got actually a result. Uh, so this was. Yeah, the, the Hungary, uh, let's see, Ecuador match. I get a little bit confused by the flag sometimes. They look very alike. So rook g7 played, and then the queen, of course, will be off the board. And so this is a win for the team of Ecuador. And we'll keep the results updated for you, of course. Also, a draw with Bolivia and England. That's this game, I think. So that is... A women's board and also here there's a result white one so that means that bolivia is now up one and a half half points versus england all right all right so the big match actually is argentina colombia that's a direct clash between the number three and number four in the standing so let's take a look at how that match is going so yep uh we've got this was a game we already took a quick look at, I think. So let's move on first to board number two. Alder Escobar playing against Pablo Ismael Acosta. White is not a pawn up. Yes, he is a pawn up, but not anymore. And I like black slightly better here. The queen is uh, very active on d4. Also, the rook is very active on c2, and uh, the pawn on d3 is kind of weak. Uh, but maybe, maybe yeah. white can save this game yeah. somehow. Somehow, yeah. Rook d2, rook d1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these pawns are double pawns, so that matters. Because, uh, for example, if the pawn was over here or over here, 
then the pawn could do a lot more in this position. But yeah, right now it's, uh, I think it's uh, going to be a draw. I don't think this looks like black can fight uh, a lot here. An I idea. think black may still come up with some ideas, but it needs some time. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think, think like what kind of ideas then. I mean, yeah, for uh, I think like even some a five move. Rook d two, rook d one. Uh yeah, just skip this rook because this is an active rook, and it's easier to create threats with black's rook. Oh, queen e three. Is that a good move? Taking here would be a bit risky, right? Take take rook e two e four or even d four. Yeah, d4 was what I was worried about, but maybe after taking, I guess we're uh, d5 or d takes c5. What would you prefer? Um, d takes c5, but in general, d4 maybe, uh, maybe it's a one. Rook c3, and then it looks okay. more or less like black is a pawn up, yeah. But rook d4, yeah, it's really not so easy. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is very unclear, yeah? All right, this d4 move might be an interesting play for white, actually. So, okay, this is on the board now. Rook c2. Okay, that's very safe. If d4, then just rook takes c4. And the king is nicely cut off. So, yeah, I was a bit surprised about this queen e3 idea as well. Because everything seems to be stuck in the white position. So, black can now very easily play something like f5, king f6, king e5, bring the king in. Maybe even to g4 to make more, to tighten up the white position even more. Maybe yeah, that's. Idea. Um, I'm sorry. Maybe white's idea uh, can be something like king f1 and then try to play rook a1 or rook. Uh, rook, 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 rook a1 and then rook a5 or. Yeah, with the idea because if you play this right now, then black is rook c3 and the rook needs to return. Um, and if you play king f1 first, let's say I play f5, then now rook a1, rook c3 is met by king e2. Yes, you have him. rook d2 still, but then rook d2, rook a3, and then I'll just stay and wait. Yeah, it's a slight improvement for the rook, which now at least has an open file to work with you. Yeah. yeah, but uh, black is very much better. It's equal as, uh, equal as material. No, material is equal, of course. Words are hard. Then, um, but black has got for a very clear plan to try and to play for a win here. Yeah. All right, um, let's move on. So I'm not sure this is a win for the player from Montenegro versus Mexico. Uh, yeah, that's correct. All right, let's move on to the next board. This one we just had, so now let's move on to... Actually, we've got a result in this matchup. We've got here Jenny uh, playing against Candela, and this was a draw, very symmetrical position. Both players were satisfied. So first result in the match is a draw. And then this one is board number four, Melissa versus Guadalupe. And who is better and why? Black is better. Uh, mm -hmm. Why? Because the king is safer. <laughs> <laughs> Queen f2 is not possible. Uh, rook d1. Oh, yeah. And yeah, king f2, Looks queen h1. Looks very difficult. Yeah, queen takes rook d1 and then mate on h1. Looks very, very bad. So yeah, king takes rook queen h1, making it hard for white. And after queen f1, queen e4. The king is so exposed, yeah. Yeah, so this looks really, really good for black. I was thinking, yeah, if white can somehow consolidate, maybe make a few moves like queen e2, queen goes here, and queen e3, then white would be pretty much okay. But uh, for now, there is some lack of coordination between the pieces. Actually, also, everybody, take a look at the time. Uh, we are closing in on the time scramble, so that's always going to be a lot of fun. Let's see how that's going to go. It's going to be a lot of fun. I really liked it. Uh, some games have been finished, but yeah, still many games in progress. 
Yep. Uh, yep. 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 A lot of games still in progress. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, more than ten at least. Yeah. All right. Let's go. So this position is, I think, the youth board. Jose versus Lucas, and who is better and why? White seems to be a pawn up. Okay, it's just all about counting sometimes. Yeah, white is a pawn up. And this pawn might fall as well. This pawn might fall as well. But you feel there are some tricks in the position. Please be careful about tricks like this. Well, uh, he's listening. Uh, rook c1. Don't play rook, don't play rook g2. Knight of one, big threat as well. Uh, Bishop g4, good that solves the whole problem in this position. Yeah, bishop e6 is coming. Or just oh, king g2 first. Yeah, knight f1 actually. Oh, actually, the knight was trapped in g3. Yeah. <laughs> what to do? One second. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, uh, I think this is resignation time. So let's move on. This looks like a win for Argentina, and that would mean that they are leading so far in the match. We've also got this result, white one. So another win for Argentina, two and a half, half uh, advantage there. Three games to go. And actually this one, uh, yeah. This All one right. has just finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking for the rest of the games. This one yeah. is actually, also over another win for Argentina. So Argentina won the match against Colombia, the number three against number four. Argentina has won that match. All right. In that case, we are done with this match, more or less. Uh, Argentina has already won. So let's try and find some interesting position on the board. Try to find something fun. Well, everything more or less seems already decided. This might be an interesting rook ending, though. Uh, maybe Ecuador, Hungary, uh, Marta Fiera, Bacuero versus Petra Pop, because at the moment Ecuador is leading 3 2. So it's. I think they just finished, though. They just finished, yeah, maybe. Uh, Fiera, yeah. so this is the match, the thing that you were, the game, the thing, the game that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, was it draw? So? so it's a draw, and that means that Ecuador beat Hungary. Oh, wait, actually, that means that um, David beat Goliath. Yeah, <laughs> because Hungary has won every match so far, and Ecuador already lost a few matches. Actually, this brings Ecuador back into the game, back into the standings where they might actually qualify for the next division. So this was actually a clutch. Yeah, yeah, we, of course, are going to update the results for everybody. So stay tuned for that. Take, keep, take a look on the left side of the board where you can see those results. We'll update them uh, as much as we can. And later, of course, we will also show the standing. So, yeah, you will have that in a later time, definitely. All right. So, so yes, Ecuador won a very important match. Uh, England won uh, also a very important match. Uh, and uh, with winning the match, Ecuador may jump to play three. Surprising. Really? Wow, that is interesting. That is going to scramble up all of the standings so far. So which team do does well then? Well, Argentina and Ecuador, of course. Yeah, They are now third and fourth, I believe, then. Yeah, also Colombia. Uh, Colombia was uh, on was was ten points, uh, but uh, but this match, the last match, they lost. So yeah, we yeah, are Hungary, actually... yeah. Mm -hmm. Hungary, England, uh, Ecuador, and Argentina. These are the four teams uh, having the best chances to qualify, the best chances to be in the top three. All right. Yeah. And everybody, all the games are over. There are only two games remaining. We've got this one and we've got this one. I thought that the other one was slightly more interesting because, uh, well, black is simply 
what is it? Uh, two pawns up, and the pawns are already very far advanced. So e3, f2 could be like a winning maneuver here. So that's why I wanted to stick with the other game. And yeah, but this looks like a very much a draw, actually. Okay, rook of six. At least try this. <laughs> Did try, but no, no. <laughs> Did not go for it, so No, yeah. th thank you. I don't want your G4 pawn. <laughs> he was so nice by giving this pawn, but... Uh, pawn. Oh, generous. He didn't want to to take that gift well. Of course, if, well, if Black did that, then uh, Rook G6 would have lost the game. So instead, a very nice result with a draw. All right, only one game to go. That's this one. So yeah, the not really interesting game so far, but actually they are in time trouble, at least black is. So E3 needs to be timed at a good moment. But so far black is just uh, hopping with the king over to B6, it seems. Black is just wandering uh, all over the board with the queen, uh, with the king, yeah, trying to find the best place. Uh, just play, but maybe, maybe just play A3, E3 and, and that's it. Yeah, that looks uh, like a winning idea there. Actually, e3 already wins, I think. F takes, um, f2. Look, f4, make it spectacular way. Uh, I saw that one, but I thought it wasn't a very clean idea, you know? With the idea, oh, actually, it got... Ah, uh, because there's a check, yeah, check and rookie yeah. one. You know, so, I that might careful. have won, yeah. Please, but e3, f takes, rook f5, a2, king b2, and rook d1, white okay. needs. Uh, rook d2 and rook d1 that's it yeah. or rook d2 first indeed yeah yeah looks winning let's see if it's going to be on the board uh we've got a few moves yep it's on the board it's on the board and f2 not rook f4 very well played by uh yeah uh let me see gerardo rook oh f4. yeah uh, rook f4. oh yeah <laughs> uh, my, uh, <laughs> my mistake a2 do you have any fortresses? Maybe well, not. I don't believe Queen in fortresses. <laughs> Are you a world champion so that you don't believe in fortresses? Why not? Why not on Queen G1? G1? Queen G1 would have been very good, yeah. And then winning the G3 pawn, that would have been already over. Yeah, but yeah, really? now it's getting hard. If the king gets over here, well, actually, it's still uh, the book endings like these are so tough to. Uh, rook versus queen endings are like these are so tough to decipher because there are a lot of move order mistakes that white can make. You know, I think it's a draw. I'll just stay with the king and there is no way black can improve the position. Looks like it. Mm. Yeah, computer may say it's minus 3.5, but it's a draw. King h1. Looks like it. Yeah, the king cannot advance. King e5. Wow, that was that was tragic in a way. But Black did not make the right move order there, and now it's uh, now it's quite an easy draw actually. Well, did not expect that. All right, so Luca very well defending by the player from. Let me see the country again, Montenegro. Yeah, I don't know. I was a bit confused by the Ma uh, North Macedonian flag for some reason. I've seen a lot of flags in, uh, in the that song. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I, I am a bit afraid we will have to wait another fifty moves to to see how Black will play this position. Um, but oh no, draw was agreed. So yeah, yeah. good. Draw good was agreed. We've got all the results now on. Uh, yeah, all the results are in, all the games are over. And yeah, we will, of course, update you with the final results. Oh, actually, do we have it already? Yeah, we have it already, actually. Yeah. All right. So, Ecuador winning the match against Hungary, three and a half, two and a half. Bolivia losing the match, two, four against England. England being the one top team that was doing very well in this round. Costa Rica, Scotland, three, three tie. Mexico, Montenegro, that is a free free tie with this result added. And Argentina winning against Colombia with at least three and a half points. So, yeah, big results in this round. 
Uh, yeah, we will, of course, be back with um, the official standings. But for now, let's take a quick look at the individual results. Because actually, if you take a look at poll E, you see that two Argentina players are doing work in this pool. They've got seven out of eight. Uh, and actually, those are probably the two women players in the team. They are doing extremely well uh, carrying the team of Argentina to in the race towards place three for qualification for the next top division. Also, a lot of other players in there as well. Yeah. Um, Hungar Hungarian players. Actually, I only see one player with five out of five and two players with four out of four. David Howell, Dorina Demeter, and Benjamin Gladura and Tikla Kara from Hungary doing very well. Actually, all these Hungarian players have 100%. That's amazing, actually. <laughs> How many players do you want with 100%? <laughs> uh, there had to be a reason for Hungary being uh, on the top place, on the top of the uh, of our of division of pool yeah. E in division two. Sorry, I mixed a, a bit. Everything. Do you have the standings? Uh, you ask, and we deliver. Here we go. We've got the standings. Hungary and England. Still very, very good in this standing. So these two teams more or less already qualified. And Colombia, Argentina, and Ecuador are going to clutch it out in the last round. As you can see, board points do matter now. They need to win a lot of board points maybe to qualify for the next round. So we have an exciting last round to go. We'll be back shortly after this break, actually. So, yeah, don't go anywhere. Uh, pet the dog, uh, grab some popcorn, uh, grab a beer. Why not? Or some wine if you're a wine person, not a beer drinker. And we'll be back shortly with the last round of this weekend, Olympiad. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be back soon. Yeah, thanks for bringing all these uh, templates. Thanks to our producers. Thanks uh, for the subs. Thanks for supporting the channel. Stay tuned. We will be back just in a few minutes. See you shortly. Everything's undecided. Everything will be decided in the very last round.
Yeah, and uh, we are back, everybody. We are live again, of course, with the final round of Pool E in the online 2020 Olympiad. I'm still Roland, together with Anna Muzichuk. Hello, Anna. We had a long day, of course, and we are still not finished. Only one round to go. Yes, and I am ready for that. And uh, before we start, I'd like to thank Grandmaster Robert Hess for the raid. Thanks for this big raid with a party of 608. That was really cool. Uh, so for the new viewers, I'm Grandmaster Anna Muzutuk. Uh, I'm the, together with Grandmaster Roland Prusers, and we are commentating on Division 2 of uh, FIDE Online Chess Olympiad and this is this will be the last round in Pool E. So the last three spots, uh, the last three, three teams which will be qualified to the top division uh, will be decided right now. Everything's undecided, everything's unclear. It's uh, still full of fight. Yes, absolutely. So let's see and let's remind everybody on the left side of the board, that's actually my right side, but let's go. Uh, you can see the standings currently next to the board. So Hungary and England are doing very well. They are more or less already qualified. While Argentina, Colombia, Ecuador, and perhaps even Mexico, actually, actually Mexico is already Unlikely. out of the race. Yeah, they cannot statistically uh, get into the third place anymore because they lack board points. But Argentina, Colombia, and Ecuador still have a very, very good shot to, um, to qualify for the next division because the top three teams move on to the next division. So the place three battle is still open. And let's take a look at what the matches are. And I'm very, very excited because we've got a direct clash. We've got Colombia versus ecuador how about that that is some nice last round that we can uh, uh cover in this uh, broadcast and also of course right below that we've got the other important match which is montenegro versus argentina so montenegro not doing too hot at the moment they are uh second to last in this pool so actually that gives argentina the biggest chances to qualify for the next round don't you think anna yeah, that's true. But we have seen so many surprises today. So I wouldn't say that this round will not bring any other surprises. Let's just dive into the games in case they started, but maybe not yet. Uh, maybe not yet. I think that we are almost, we are at the beginning of the games. They probably actually already just started. We can take a look if that happened yeah a few games have already started the games are slowly starting and popping into my screen so that i can put it on the board for you so yeah um well there's not much to say about the openings yet but we can maybe if i see a funny opening that we can cover it oh well this is kind of funny why not uh no open sicilian on board what is this board four uh in the ecuador versus colombia match so um, this is going to be very confusing for us because the, the flags look almost identical. So, But keep in mind that the Ecuador flag has a, I believe it's a crown in the center, while uh, the Colombia flag does not have that. So black is Colombia and uh, white is Ecuador. So yeah, do you know this B3 opening has been quite popular lately? Do you know anything about this system against the... Uh, E6 Sicilian? I faced it a couple of times myself. It's not the main line. The main line is D4, of course, but B3 is, uh, you know, this line which is not so bad and it's definitely a surprise because uh, I believe players from the black side, they don't uh, actually pay so much attention to such moves as B3, while if you don't know what to do, it's uh, not so clear and you start spending time and it's a rapid game so you don't have so much time it's not so easy yeah white is bringing the bishop to b2 that means it will be more difficult for black to develop the bishop from f8 because mm -hmm. of the because the pawn on g7 will be kind of hanging in this uh, 
uh, after that, yes. So uh, some typical plans may be also like playing c4 and pushing d4 later on. Or another idea is just to play bishop b2 in case black plays knight c6, sometimes white goes bishop b5. Uh, yeah, more or less the idea is like that. Uh, b6 was played in the game, black is trying to use some a similar setup, bring the bishop to b7, attacking the e4 pawn. b6 is uh, quite a good move, many grandmasters. Uh, played b6 in uh, their games. So, for example, if uh, white proceeds with bishop b2, uh, then bishop b7 attacking the e4 pawn, as it was mentioned. And in case white plays knight c3, this knight will cover the bishop. So, this was the idea behind b6 and uh, bishop b2. Black may try continue with knight f6 or d6, or okay, there are too many possibilities. <laughs> A lot of possibilities, yeah. And I want to actually, that was absolutely perfect, uh, to add some uh, small thing of this. This B3 line actually got popular when Gary Kasparov made a small comeback in the St. Louis tournament when he was playing against America's best players. And he played very well there. And actually, one of his weapons was this B3 line. And I'm curious to see, no, it did not happen, but I'm going to show it anyway. After b6, the move that was played, and that was more or less the novelty that Kasparov introduced there, was actually the move bishop d3 here, which is a prophylactic move with the idea that after bishop b7, short castle, um, knight f6, you are going to keep the bishop on c1, because in some moments the bishop is actually better there. You can play c3 and d4 at some point. There was a very, that was a very creative idea by Kasparov playing very prophylactical with the move bishop d3. I think the main line goes actually rook e1, and at some point actually the move e5 is also uh, available there. So yeah, Gary Kasparov making a comeback and already making himself a name in, uh, yeah, in a line that hasn't been played very often. So a theoretical uh, contribution there. So yeah. Roland, thank you so much. Thanks for this display. To be honest, I didn't know the story. I don't even know the game. Yeah, sometimes it happens. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't <laughs> know the game. Uh, but yeah, live and learn. Yeah, Yeah. there's uh, there's chess is endless. There are endless possibilities. So I, I think there are 7 billion different, uh, 7 billiard, billion different positions available in chess. So there's always something new to learn. So yeah. Yeah, the way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you step, <laughs> step by step. Yeah, we're we're starting with one billion positions, and then two, and then three, and then three, and so on. Small steps. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So White chose to play d4, and I think White is going to look for some sort of Maroxi setup, which is also very interesting here. But yeah, uh, this is just the opening phase. Games have been underway for only a few minutes yet, so. We're going into the hectic phase a little bit later. Um, yeah, but let's keep going with this uh, match, of course, the most important match so far. Oh, that looks fun. Um, looks like this is probably a Grunfeld, right? Uh, it's still the city line. It may, uh, this line may come from Grunfeld, from English opening, uh, from ready i believe yeah it's like you know the mixture of the openings but the position is the same <laughs> yeah exactly this line yeah then d5. and yeah d5 yeah this is on a very topical line why it's uh, destroying its own pawn structure but trying to get some initiative in return but black just saying no oh, i'm just gonna do whatever you're doing so here you go and we've got a very symmetrical position and if you take the rook, then queen takes, and white, and uh, you're going to be in some trouble over here. And so queen takes d8, rook takes d8, bishop g2. This is just a very equal position, not much to say here, right? It's just a long theoretical line which basically bring um, both of the players to the equal end game. Uh, but yeah, black needed to know this line in order uh to get this uh, position because if they make something in the opening that would have been very bad 
Yeah, I was also thinking about the match situation. Both players are not really uh, happy with the draw because what they need, both teams of Colombia and Ecuador, need actually a big win in order to qualify maybe for the next round because Argentina is going to play against Montenegro. So if Argentina wins with big numbers as well, which is quite likely, then board points are going to be decisive. So both teams need to play for a win. So I'm a, a bit surprised to see an opening like this on the board, which more or less can already be agreed to a draw because these are grandmasters. They should be able to do this without uh, with their eyes closed, more or less. So, But okay, it's on the board. Let's move on to position two, uh, game two on the... Um, in the match, uh, this looks this looks more exciting. Um, mm -hmm. I like it much more. F four on the board, knight on c seven, a bit unusual. But F four, F five, G four, G five, very straightforward plan. Yeah, I like it more for white. Me too. Usually the knight should be over here or over here, and black should maybe have a chance to put some pressure on the queen side somehow or on in the center, but. These are not possible at the moment. So, yeah, I totally agree. I really like White's position. Something went wrong in the opening. Let's take a quick look. G3. Okay, so this is the D6 line. Very passive. Usually, I think Caruana introduced... Uh, well, E5 is, of course, the main line here. But D6 was played in the game. So, Knight C3, E5, G3. Um, yeah, D6, still very passive, but... It's what you like, and white actually already got some sort of advantage here. So what I'm very surprised about is that black put the knight on c7. Wouldn't you have put the knights on b4 instead? Maybe on c5. Or on c5, yeah, where it's a little more active. Uh, knight on c7, uh, I think it was kind of preparing d5, uh, but, but black doesn't have so much time for that. No, because there is also a pawn hanging on e5. So, yeah. And by the way, knight b4 is also protecting the d5 square. So, yeah. That's, yeah, good point. And, yeah, black play a5 and a a6 and a5 with the tempo. That's actually quite a common idea. So, because now you have a nice square on b4. But if you're going to put the, the knight on c7, then this square doesn't really matter at this point. So, yeah, uh, a bit surprised by that play. Uh, so yeah, I think that's the reason uh, in combination with the slow d6 idea that white is very, very happy here. It should be free played, probably like you said, f5 and g4 next. Yeah, looking good for, let me check again, Ecuador team. Yeah, let's move on. Next uh, game, uh, board three or no this is board four this is women's board this is board three i think three first board of the women so oh, first board of the yeah, yeah. yeah. Marta fiero once again she's doing very very well in uh for her team uh but not so hot in this game i think she's a bit passive uh she has problems with the d6 pawn uh, mm -hmm. white has to pairs bishop advantage uh, so white is clearly, white clearly has an edge. Yeah. So what would, it, well, not this move, of course. What plan would you play here as white? Uh, I like B3, point. just uh, strength, uh, <laughs> strengthening the uh, position in the center. Okay, uh, just, you know, yeah, prophylaxis uh, in case black goes rook c8 and attack the c4 pawn. Uh, but uh, big question is, uh, yeah, how to improve the position? Maybe h4, h5 plan is actually yep. interesting. That's an idea of mine as well, so that you have bishop h3 at your disposal, and also maybe even you can create some weaknesses on g6 at some point. It's a very slow game. Uh, well, another idea could be to play a4, a5, perhaps to even tight, tighten the position down. Even more, and if you are, if you were listening to the commentator session as a player, and you wanted to do us a favor, then you could, of course, also go for the Eliakine gun. Yes, we love to see that. Let's go. Let's see that on the board. If you're nice. Uh, this may happen. The chances are very high that this will this will happen in this game. 
<laughs> well, it's only two moves. Why not indulge the sweet commentators? You know, we're doing a good job here. We're, you know, just to make us happy. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, okay. But now, actually, after rook e c8, h4, and bishop h3 is a very nice idea because then you have a very nice pin already on the board. So, yeah, looks like good. Uh, looks like a very good idea to play like this. I wouldn't play too much on the queen side, though. I would like to keep this intact as much as possible so that black doesn't have a lot of counter possibilities there. All right, uh, yeah, hopefully an Alakine gun, but we'll see that later. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, yeah, this was the this was the B3 opening that we checked. Um, yeah, so indeed white is going to go for this, probably this Maroxy structure in, at some point. Um, but I'm not yeah. so sure about the last move. Maybe instead of king g1, white could go directly with g4. Okay, I understand it's quite committal and uh, you have to be careful with such a moves. Uh, but this is one of the ideas, g4, g5, typical idea in the Sicilian. Maybe black has to play something like h6, but h6. Yeah, that's my, that was my big question. Usually if you want to play g4, then the first thing you need to look at what does it contribute if black plays a simple move like h6? But I think we've got a good answer to this, don't we? Uh, I, I have two answers. <laughs> one, one well, I yeah. <laughs> play g5, uh, well, then yeah, h takes g5, f takes g5, and if knight goes to h5, let's say, then some ideas with g6. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Or another idea was to play h4 before playing g5. But I prefer g5 straightforward. Yeah, because h4 may be sometimes a bit too slow. Maybe black will play g5 from black side. This is a typical idea. I don't know if it works here, but yeah, it's a typical idea. Mm -hmm. uh, don't mm -hmm. ask me what to do now. The position is too complicated. <laughs> I wanted to play this, but I'm not sure if it works. Seems like it, though. I don't know. Oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> because queen g3, you just have queen g2. So that's nothing, unfortunately. Yeah, so just knight h, knight h7, I suppose. And then try to block the position off of knight uh, g5. Yeah, I like g5 immediately a lot better than h4. I think uh, h4 is very, very familiar, usually. And black can even want castle long and then your position is very very weak on the king side so if yeah. you push pawns like this you have to be absolutely sure that you're uh, gonna be okay now yeah. actually after h4 probably the typical idea is here to just play g6 by the way it's the idea that after g5 you can simply play knight h5 and say okay you got a pawn on g5 but what you're gonna do with it you know so yeah the knight's very stable on h5 like this yeah, yeah um, idea, g6 and knight h5. So, yes, uh, we both prefer g5 immediately without without h4. Yeah, Agreed. so g4, h6, and g5 had our preference right here. But uh, king h1 played, and the, the, the reason why we were spending some time here was because of king h1. It's now less attractive to put... Uh, to push the g4 pawns now it's a lot harder for white to make some progress on the queen side uh short castle played now g4 becomes more attractive but still after g4 what are you going to do after a move like g6 did you achieve something that is how you try and play positions like this because if g5 knight h5 and once again what you're gonna do with that you know so yeah that's Oh, those are the questions. Let's see what White was doing. Rook a e1. Maybe going for an e5 break. Knight c5 played, and now c4. Okay, so in the end, she went for a Maroxy structure anyways. But you know, White is playing in a bit strange way because White is trying to make all the plans possible. Uh, but... Uh... What yeah. I mean is that I, if you want to go with c4, black, uh, white would actually maybe prefer to have the rook on c1, not on e1. If uh, yep. white wanted to play the plan with g4, then it's better to keep the king on g1. 
Yeah, so um, incro inconsistent moves here from white. Not really sure what the right plan is here to break through. Yeah, also, if you want to play with f5 and e5, then usually you want to have a knight on c3. So there is also a little bit of an inconsistent thing there. So yeah, I think if you want to be consistent in this position, then it's probably best to play something... Well, okay, e5 is the, is the most consistent move, but because you play rook e1. But is that a move you really want to play here? Without the light squared bishop? I am not so sure. Yeah, let's say I play a move like with ac8. Actually, I'll be right back. There's a storm brewing, so I need to close the windows, otherwise it might get messy. I'll be right back. Yes, we hope to see you very soon. Unfortunately, I can't move the pieces, but the plan for black may be to play something like rook b8, uh, rook a b8, followed by bishop c6 and trying to push a b5. Another plan is, of course, trying to break in the center with rook a c8, rook f d8, and d5. In case white plays e5, then the knight jumps to e4 and i really hope we will have roland soon to show all these ideas on the board because it's easier to understand when when we have the position on the board you called for me well here yeah, i, yeah, yeah, well, I really need it because i explained 100 yeah. plans but yeah. i couldn't explain my more 594 yeah oh, that's look. you were listening i was listening i'm always listening and i've got a six sense to listen to start a patient person so attentive and another plan please for black yeah what's the uh what's the other plan that you mentioned again uh rook a b8 bishop c6 and b5 uh rook a wait what okay. bishop rook a b8 bishop c6 and oh b5 yes of course that makes a lot of sense i heard e5 for some reason so i was thinking like what <laughs> what did you say yeah i thought e5 but then knight f5 looks really really strong so that is not a great idea in a position like this but yeah sorry i was out of there there's a really big storm brewing so i was a little bit worried about my sh my uh yeah, the wind picking up and such, and I had a blind out, and that might be a little bit dangerous. So, yeah, but I'm back, everybody. I'm back. Let's move on to the next game, because this is looking very interesting, and we've already spent a lot of time here, of course. So let's move on to the next game. Boing. Which game is this? Mm, the youth board, I guess. Board five in the match. It looks like some, I don't know, was it uh, Roy Lopez, Philidor, but Philidor was the bishop on g7, it's something unusual. Mm -hmm. Which line was that? Oh, this is funny. Uh, it's yeah. King's Indian set. <laughs> it was not easy to guess. Mm. Well, it was a transposition, I guess, yeah, towards a uh, perch. Well, yeah, actually, perch, but with the bishop been... on d5, a bit unusual, yeah, and with yeah. the knight on d2. Yeah, especially the knight on d2, because if we if we move backwards, I think a very normal setup would be something like e4, d6, d4, knight f6, knight c3, g6, knight f3. Uh, this is, I think, a very normal variation in the, in the perch, but the knight is on c3. So um, I'm, I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, it's the perch, right? It's not the perch. A perch, uh, some people say, so I don't know how... Uh... English native speakers call it, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, in the Netherlands, we say Peert, but uh, I think we exactly. Say it's a <laughs> yeah, Peert. Exactly. That's what I was going for. Yeah. So I said Perch, but it's actually Peert. Yeah. There you go. That's how you pronounce it, everybody. Now, don't mispronounce it after today. Okay. Right, uh, let's move on. So, so yeah, and if we compare this position to the position with the knight on d2, I believe that with the knight on c3, it's uh, a bit better because it's more active. Yeah, I agree. So slightly different, uh, c3 played knight b7. Usually black is going for the Philidor setup or just the Roy Lopez setup more or less. And uh, yeah, this is actually, this looks really like a Roy Lopez setup, doesn't it? And okay, black is gonna go for the typical briar setup while white is answering with c4. The bishop usually doesn't go to h4, usually it goes back to e3 and you play a move like h3. But the c4 ideal connected with the rook c1, 
is something that might be very well interesting. And after taking, taking A4, White is going to try and collect the seed teams. So Queen B6 was played because if B takes A4, Bishop takes A4, there are some problems with the C6 pawn. Yep. That's why Black didn't want that. Black played Queen B6. Uh, yep, Queen B6. And now White is thinking what to do. Yes, he is. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, the, I like. I don't like the bishop on h4. Usually, what you want to do is try to put the bishop here so that you also have got potential of the a file at some point. Well, if the bishop is on g3, it's looking at a bit of a pawn chain, not that much. But for example, if it's white to move and you play a move like bishop g3, then you might lose the bishop pair because of a move like knight h5. So the bishop basically doesn't have a lot of future on the h4 square. And that's why usually players don't go in h to h4 in a lot of positions like this, because you don't want to lose the bishop pair. All right, but uh, yeah, enough about this position. Very interesting position. And let's move on to the last board of this match. And this is once again an interesting pawn structure. Reminds me a little bit of the... Anish Giri game in the last round against David uh, Anton David Guillaro. Um, same structure, but no queens on the board. There were some differences. There was no deep on for white, and uh, white had to bishop's per advantage. Yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah. Whose side would you prefer? Uh, Which side? Yeah. The dark side. The dark side, yeah. <laughs> no, I think of the, moon. Uh, of, uh, the force is always with me, everybody. Uh, no, no, if you're on the dark side, then the force is not with me, right? Or it is. Anakin Skywalker was a was on the dark side, but the force was with him. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I prefer. I think I prefer black slightly because the bone structure is slightly better, uh, especially on the queen side. And for example. This pawn on c4 might become a target at some point. Although black does have white does have a bit more space, so for but I don't know, I'm a bit worried to advance here. But white needs to be very, very careful not to get countered somehow. Um yeah, what, what's your preference? I think that the biggest problem in black's position is the knight on g7. Just imagine the knight is on d7. Uh it would be much better for black because uh before rook e7 was played i was thinking about some idea like c5 <laughs> followed let's see by knight e6 but after c5 i didn't know what to do after d5 how to bring this knight uh to some active square oh. yeah so you suggest the move uh, d5 for white no 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 i suggest move d5 in case black played c5 instead of or ah, okay, I gotcha. Okay, so c5, d5, and where is the knight going to go? Yeah, yeah. if uh, the knight could jump to e5, especially in one move, that would have been perfect for <laughs> yeah. black. But with the knight on g7, yes, uh, I don't know how to do that. Well, one idea could be a move like b5, with the idea if you take, then bishop takes. Ah, that's not possible, actually. <laughs> Oops, my mistake. Nine hours stream, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying to be sharp. You're always sharp still. So, yeah, well, you're amazing. You, you're you still sharp after all this time. All right, so rookie seven. Yeah. Um, all right, so how does white continue then in this, in this game? Uh, do you want to maybe put the knight over here perhaps and then to f6, but it's a very long road. And I'm not sure after knight e3. I think it's possible because you cannot take on e4 because of knight d5. But after rook f8, you are a bit slow to play g5 because now black is attacking e4. So, yeah, what do you think? I think about something like knight f4, rook e8, knight d5. But maybe black has some ideas like bishop d5, c takes d5, and f5. Again, using this pin. This so strategically, very... yeah, it looked very good before F5 was played, but uh, 
but yeah, after f5, this tactical shot, uh, this is worrying me a little bit. Yeah, who needs tequila shots if you got tactical shots, right? So <laughs> here you go. Um, do we have more game? More, I think g5 is played. Okay, but this is really slow. After rook f8 and then knight d6. How would you react to this? Uh, rook e8 looks like a normal move, but after rook, I don't know. Maybe something like uh, knight e6, h4, h6, just to get rid of this pawn. And uh, d takes h6, king h7, or is it, is it, is it bad? Is it good? I'm not sure. In general, very good idea. Yeah, very common, of course, but it seems that tactically maybe it doesn't work that well. Let's find out why. Um, maybe e5 or h5 moves like that might be annoying. Or actually, maybe just knight e3. Why not? King mm. takes knight g4. Or actually, knight f5 is also an idea. Take. Okay. He takes. This looks mm, okay. Some check. Some check. Those. Good. Mm. Looks okay. Not much going on here. Rook g4, maybe. Yeah, white will take the piece back, but uh, then material will be equal, yeah? Almost. Yeah, maybe even knight c5 or knight f4. No, that probably is not the best, but that's interesting. Yeah, all right. So maybe this h6 move is a bit dangerous to play too quickly. So rook f8 is on the board, rook f2 on the board. Well, actually, maybe we were just a bit... Um, um, inaccurate. What about 96 h4 and now h6? Or one more idea was not knight e6, but knight h5 and f6. Maybe this is interesting. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I like it. Yeah, because, okay, let's say white makes a weird move, king f2, then f6, g takes, knight takes, you are attacking the e4 pawn as well. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I like this plan the best so far. Yeah. And also this knight on g2. This was actually kind of funny. We had a knight on g7 and a knight on g2. That's also something you don't see every day. Yeah, and one more thing uh, we can add is that if after f6, h4 is played, it, it can't be played because... Uh, no, maybe now it can be played. <laughs> uh, I meant that with the king on g1, there was... Yeah, after it's just d5 and followed by... <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> It like this. Oops, knight g3. Yeah, king h1. Even, very yeah, even moment. if the king was on g1, still knight g3. Yeah, let me do that a bit more properly. So a4, for example, f6, h4, knight g3, winning the pawn on e4. Looks uh, looks very good for black. Yeah, all right. But black decided to play knight e6, h4. And yeah, I really like the other plan a bit more, but uh, maybe this is still okay for white somehow. I like black just a lot better here. Just h6. Just let's stick to our plans. <laughs> or f6. Push, or push f6. Harry. Push Harry. Push it. He wants to play. Just uh, Jindy GM when I remind everybody. All right. So here we go. Um, board number one Argentina versus um, Montenegro. Yeah, Argentina is still in the race, so what they need to do is they need to win as many board points as they can and, of course, of course, win the match, just like Colombia-Ecuador. And take a look on the left, my right, you can see a, the current results. We're trying to update everything so that you know what's going on with all the results there. Uh, this is a very complicated endgame, actually. I think... No, it's not really. Actually, I think that black is just a lot better because the pawns are further on the board, so... It's and really you big. want to run with the pawns as quickly as possible, yeah? Meanwhile, Argentina is already winning 2-0, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's and let's get hard. those results on the board. That means that board 4-1 and board... Uh, wait, was that board four? Um, board three and board six. Yeah, board three and board six. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. I'm here for that. 
thank you so much. Yeah, counting is sometimes hard. Counting. Um, it's true, everybody. Uh, Queen G4. So yeah, nice trick. Looks good. So two zero for um, Argentina. And they look very solid. We've got one more result. And that's Scotland versus Mexico. White one. Uh, so yeah, that's a win for Mexico. We've also got a result in the Hungary game versus Bolivia. So that's not really exciting anymore. Hungary and England already qualified. So let's move on to one of those matches. So let's move back to the match between Ecuador and Colombia to see how that is going. And we've got here board one, Joshua Ruiz from uh, yeah, Colombia. Exactly, against uh, Carlos Matamoros from Ecuador. How do you... <laughs> Rook and game. Talk, talk Our favorite weird one. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's such a sad Rook, right? But I could actually play Rook A3, collect the pawn, and it should be a draw. Mm, okay, yeah. it should be a draw anyway. Yeah. All right. And with that said, let's move on. Mm. Two pawns up for black, mm -hmm. but, but some 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 chances for white. Mm -hmm. This looks like a solid idea. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna grab some pawns. Why not? Take, grab take. rook d6, rook h6. Jing jing. No. Okay, knight c4. I, w I was hoping I at least have a draw here, but uh, bishop h7 is taken by the knight, so. Not still just a pawn up for black. Still just a pawn up. Also trying to undermine this pawn on b2. Yeah, this knight on g5 is it's such a cool knight, blocking everything. Also attacking the pawn on e4. Just imagine white plays b3, and then we go knight d2, attacking both of the pawns. Not bad. Yep, not bad. This looks uh, really good for black. Um, so let's see if White actually wanted to grab that pawn. Nope, no Yasu Saito on Spirit here, just Queen C3. I'm not sure if that was a good move though, because I'm wondering what happens after a simple move like Queen E7. Oh, actually, there's a trick in the position. You've got Queen C6. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, okay, so this is actually more tricky than I thought. <laughs> and Black is also low on time. Really low on time, actually. So it was a good practical decision. Yeah, actually, I take it all back. Oh, boy. That's a big concession, though. F6. Queen C6. Queen C6. Winning the F6 pawn. Rook B8. Knight takes F6. Rook D6. Oh, what? Um, yeah, that works. Rook D8 is okay. Uh, yeah, Rook takes, Queen takes, Knight takes. Could be dangerous, but... So maybe queen c7 actually was a better move instead of queen. Oh, it's yeah. my phone. Sorry. That's zero points for you, Anna. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> queen c7. No, it's, it happens to everyone. So queen c7. Um, let's see. Yeah, because now you don't have rook d8 ideas. And actually, where's the knight going? Go, right? Knight a4, rook d7. Looks very mm -hmm. different. If rook b8, then knight f6, so... Uh, no, 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 on the previous move. Oh, okay. Apologies. Knight f6, yeah. Yeah, queen takes, queen takes. Yeah. Maybe. Nice, nice, nice. All right, let's move on, because time trouble is really kicking in right now. Rook c1 played. Queen d6 played. Very solid. Now White black, black is getting better. Better and better. Mm -hmm. Like he's take, like he is taking some medicine. Better and better. <laughs> Right, so queen b7. Um, now just take it, all right. Um, White wants to mate behind, shamelessly behind the. Uh, okay, the king g8, very good move. King f7 next. Uh, we got some results, by the way. Board three, let's get that on the board just for a second. Uh, Marta Fierro, not doing that well in this game unfortunately she was doing very well before and she was lovely to have on the broadcast but here in this game she actually lost another one 
against Melissa from Colombia. So that's not the first result. We've also got board five, a result for Colombia. Colombia winning the games here. Board six, win for Ecuador. So okay, two, two one. one. And this one is a different match. Okay, let's go back. Mm -hmm. um, this one is it's a win. Different. Yeah, this is a different one. So this is three one. No. 2-2. Two, two. It's 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Oh, <clears throat> tough battle. Tough battle indeed. Yeah. So once again, everybody, Argentina actually already taking the big lead against Montenegro. 3-1. I'm counting. I'm counting. If they have a half board more, more Argentina, then they're through. If they win the match, then they are through. Because the most that another team can have is four points. Yeah. Argentina won the match. They are leading 4-1. Right. And Argentina is through. Yeah, Argentina <clears throat> is through. So it's, it's center. Hungary, England, and Argentina very likely, right? Yes. So congratulations to those teams. I think we have official results here. Either Colombia or Ecuador needed to win with big numbers to trespass not trespass to transcend, I believe is the English word. Argentina on the standings list, but that's not possible. We already counted it 2 2. So that's not enough for the teams to qualify for the next division. So congratulations to Argentina in advance. But let's see if we can find some fun chess for the viewers to enjoy. This looks fun. I just watched the evaluation bar, which went down. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah. King G4 is not possible. King G4 leads to a forced mate, Queen F3, King G5, Queen H5, or Queen G3. Yeah, <laughs> depend. Ah, oh, time. I don't need to calculate anymore. <laughs> that time. was easy. yeah. Time went out, but Black was already looking very good with mating nets like these on the board. Okay, or just Knight F5 to protect everything on the king side, and then just gobble up some pawns like this. Yeah, looks yeah. winning for black anyway. All right, let's see if I can find. There are three more boards on uh, playing. Okay, let's see what's going on on board one. Okay, never mind, it's a draw. So we've got board two. Never mind. <laughs> never mind, this is over. So it seems that um, Colombia is going to win this match. Colombia is a black player here. Black's two pawns up. The rook cannot protect against both the pawns, so it should be over in a minute. And that's the only game. No, we still got one more. This one might be more exciting. Nope. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> yeah, all the games are over, will be over very shortly, everybody. And we'll, of course, update all the standings and the result for you. And yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at the last game then. Let's see how Black is going to finish this one. But amazing result. Did you, did you, uh, ever, did you think that Argentina would win uh, a spot in the next division after seeing how the first two days were going? Yeah, I was not sure about it. And that's actually one of the surprise. I was more or less sure about Hungary and England, uh, about these teams. They are very strong. But uh, who uh, will be a third? It was completely unclear for me. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, for me too. Uh, for Argentina, I did think uh, they did not perform very well in the first two days. I think that they were starting today as number six or number five in this round but uh in the start of the day so at round before round seven so that means that they i think they won every match after that they beat ecuador that was an important match ecuador was actually on third place at some point but they beat ecuador they also colombia. beat colombia so those were two clutch matches that argentina made and with that actually yeah and montenegro in the last round so three very important wins that actually turn the tables. Yep. By the way, um, White is having chances here. Might be a draw. 
Mm. One pawn gobbled off the board. If what? Let me do. Now don't go to c1. Okay, very good. But now knight knight here perhaps, or knight e2. There are some tricks here in the position still, and in time trouble you never know. And maybe rook c4. Or... Yep, possible. Okay, or rook c2 first. Asking where the knight will go, or maybe, maybe yeah. not. But... Um, White brings uh, the king closer. The chances are higher to survive. Yeah, let's see if it's happening. Rook c4 on the board and king e3 on the board. There you go. We are wizards, you and I. Uh, rook c8. It looks like a draw. King two, yeah, king is coming. King is two, coming. Pawns, two pawns off for black, but I think white's just going to play king d2 all the time. King d2, knight c4. Or king d4. King d4, knight c4, knight c3, and white wins. <laughs> yeah, let's show that on the board, actually. Why not? Knight c3, king a1, and whoops. That's a yeah. mate. So here, um, a black blade, knight c6. Check. King gears, and now knight. Ooh, that was close one. Almost knight c3. <laughs> but I think knight c1 and knight b4, oh, that's scratch that. There's a rook over here. So I guess uh, just rook b5, knight b3. Well, some progress from a black side, but maybe then knight c3, king b2, knight a4, and yeah, it's eternal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with repetition of moves. That was unfortunate. Black was two pawns up. It should have been winning. But uh, yeah, white defended like a lion, and now it's suddenly a draw. So actually, that means mm -hmm. that uh, the match ended in a draw. In free free. Uh what did it mean for the for the standings? Maybe not so much. Okay, the question about the fourth and fifth place, yeah. Yep. For honor and glory, as they say, but I believe that would be Colombia clutching fourth place. In any case, uh we are gonna go on a short break, everybody. After the break, we will of course be back with the standings and the results. And actually, we've got one last guest to offer you in this weekend. So, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back very shortly. See you very soon.
And we are back. As uh, as mentioned, we have one last guest for you to offer. We've got actually the board number one player, I believe, from Hungary, Victor Erdos. Congratulations with your qualification on the next division. Welcome to the broadcast. Yeah, how are you feeling about the promotion? Yeah, it's amazing, amazing. I actually was uh, kind of uh, leave on kind of confidently, I, I, I guess. So I'm very proud of the team. So, and we are looking forward to playing good chess uh, in the next stage. Nice. Actually, it looks uh, it looked like everything was so smoothly for your team. You were beaten uh, with uh, big scores, but was there any moment you actually worried about the result of uh, your game or about the result of your team? Uh, I don't think uh, we, we were... We, we had any kind of worries. We were just trying to play our best and see what happens. So, it, you know, yeah, it's part of uh, online chess that probably uh, you're not that worried about ratings and anything like that. So you can just play comfortably. So uh, I prefer actually. Um, well, yeah, just okay. play and enjoy. And this is uh, how to do it and how to win the pool. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, we had some lucky moments as well, but uh, I mean, uh, if we are fighting, uh, it's, it's just like that. So there were so many mistakes, but we finally reached it up. So I think we, we can just be satisfied what happened altogether. Yeah. So are you guys going to have a big party after this? Like, uh, yeah? <laughs> um, unfortunately, the team is kind of uh, scattered a little bit. So uh, some of us even. Budapest, but a uh, uh, lot of other guys live uh, somewhere uh, around Hungary. So it's okay. We will have some small celebrations, probably, but uh, nothing yeah. uh, special. What are, yeah. And what are your expectations for the top division? You have a very strong team. Uh, do you think you have chances to be in the top three? In the top three in the top division? Yeah, that's what we are going to. Right for so just um, uh, we will do our best for sure. So I, I, I'm optimistic. So what can I say? <laughs> we will do yeah. our best. Uh, how were you staying in contact with your teammates? Did you have a separate Zoom call, for example, or did you text on the phone, or did you have a group app or something where you stay in touch about scores? How did uh, you uh, during the game? Uh, we don't have really really time to to check others' games. So I'm there. Oh. I'm, I'm actually. Act at least uh, myself, uh, I, I don't have the the time to do that. But after the game, we have a Facebook uh, uh, chat and ah. uh, we discuss some some stuff sometimes and and, uh, and to try to keep up uh, what what's happening. Um, so yeah, so we are we stay in touch for sure uh, after the game's finished. So. All right. Did you share some motivational words as the number board one board player in the group app? Oh, nothing special. Like, let's go, guys. We won another yeah, match. It's like <laughs> just, just very typical things. So uh, nothing particular. Uh, interesting or different. Will, I believe they will come up with some mottos to the top division. They need some additional surprises and yeah, to surprise our teams. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, were there any individual scores in the Hungarian team that stood out to you, Victor? Uh, uh, in the, what individual score? Like, uh, was there one player in the team who performed extra well, in your opinion, or like uh, who, who clutched it out in a lot of the matches or something? I, I guess uh, Adam Kozak won most of his games or all of his games. I, I I'm not sure. It's like five, uh, at least five out of five. Uh, if I recall it well. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I I don't remember. Yeah, I think I I don't I don't know. But probably his performance was the best, but okay. But altogether, of course, if we won the... <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, it's, it's, yeah, uh... We can all be kind of satisfied because at least, uh, of course, some maybe some player just sacrificed themselves uh, for the team. We can assume that. <laughs> so it's, it's like, all right. Right. it was teamwork. Yeah. It was teamwork yeah. for sure. It was all about the team winning, of course. Team is, uh, is what's most important. More important but, uh, yeah. Maybe. We had some nice games, so you can you can check it out. Especially, yeah, I, I mentioned Adam Kozak. He had a very nice uh, clean sacrifice, and 
great attacking game in, in Italy and, and uh, uh, opening. So, so that, right. that's probably the most beautiful game yeah. of ours. Uh, we have to wrap it up, unfortunately. Uh, but once again, uh, congratulations, of course, with the Hungarian promotion. We wish you all the best of luck in the top division, which will be very exciting for you, of course, and also for us to follow. Thank you, so, thank you yeah. for having me. And thank okay. you for coming on the broadcast. Yeah. All the best, guys. See you. Hey everybody, and we are back for a few last minutes because, of course, we did not show everything yet that has happened this weekend and also not what has happened in Pool E exactly. But okay, here you go. We've got the full standings of what happened this weekend. Let's start with Pool E that has just finished. On the right side of the screen, you can see that Hungary, England and Argentina officially qualified for the next division and let's also take a look at the other pool so going from right to left this time pool d turkey croatia and norway in pool c spain netherlands very happy about that and italy moving on to the next division pool b greece romania and slovakia and pool a bulgaria germany and indonesia are the qualifying teams for the next division so they will be playing against some of the top qualifying teams let's take a look at which teams these are so the seeded teams the top five of the previous olympiad was russia china usa ukraine and india and there are also of course various other uh, very good countries other than that for example armenia uh, Azerbaijan, Poland, also very strong countries that are very hard to beat. So all the countries that just qualified to this division are going to have a hard time making it to the final stage. So that was it for us. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for coming and viewing our broadcast. Maybe some of you were actually watching us for the whole day, maybe even the whole weekend. So thank you so much for watching us i hope you enjoyed and of course i hope you enjoyed me but also of course my lovely co-host adam zichuk yeah uh we're signing off everybody we'll be back next weekend with more action of the top division and uh i was your host roland prusers and this was anna zichuk any final words anna uh final words what can i say three exciting days are behind we had nine hour long streams each day but to be honest personal for me time passed quite quickly i would like to thank you roland walter thanks for being my partners these days thanks uh, also to people who are behind the scenes but who helped us a lot and thank you viewers of course because uh, without your support it would have been much more difficult thanks for watching uh, this stream thanks for following our streams yesterday and the day before yesterday thanks for your comments and feedback 
uh, have a nice uh, day or a nice evening. And yeah, we will have a two days break yeah, before the top division starts. And I hope you will all be back for the games uh, during the top division. So enjoy chess. Have a nice day and see you next time. Actually, I want to close off with one more thing because in this weekend we had some internet problems. So I want to give a special shout out to Mr. Producer who actually came as a replacement for me, uh, Mr. Wouter Bigfoot. You saw him probably sometime showing his studio and petting his lovely dog. So I do want to give him a special shout out because he came in clutch in this weekend. So, yep. And with that, everybody, we are signing off and we will see you next weekend.